boys. Listen, all right, it's working. It's working out okay. I pro- no. Um, no, I'm excited to get that started, though. I, I'm really looking yeah, forward man. to... Uh, we still got to... We're trying to figure out all the behind-the-scenes junk, but once we get that done, we're going to start making some little goofy little ads. So Sweet. I'm looking forward no, to No, we're it. not. We're done. Yes, we are. Is we this, are. This, we're going to have fun with it. Yes, we are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Nobody's hello, in here hello. from my from my Nobody. viewership right now. What the so fuck? it's because it's, it's my channel. We're just <laughs> chatting right now. No, tonight's the night we revive it. We're bringing right. it back. Did you post in your community channels? Yep. I did. Let me I just did double check morning. and make sure that I did. I posted it everywhere, but. <sighs> People are like, "Fuck this!" It's there. We go. Now it's live. Was it it just popped live? up in my yeah. It just popped up on mine. Oh, oh okay. Uh, maybe it's there's probably a delay. I did post yeah. it. Yeah, seven hours ago. We got some. Folks What's up, in guys? Here. Hello, everyone. Welcome Hello. to the channel. What's up, Artie? We're back. How you doing, buddy? <sighs> Cynthia's here. How you doing? Boo. <laughs> oh Jesus! No. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Hello, <CJ>. everyone. <laughs> What's, What's up, happening? Guys? What's happening? going we're, on everybody uh, i know we've been oh yeah now we've got some people been neglecting again. everybody for weeks because well at first it started off as our problem and, and then evan had to go uh watch the eclipse yeah, yeah. what a piece then, of shit and then yeah. and then and then everything, <laughs> uh, everything fell apart so well good. i did a live stream on friday so okay yeah whatever Okay, nobody wanted to watch you play your little kid game. Dude, Lu- Lucius is a badass game. <laughs> it was actually. fun, man. It, it really looked is. fun. I I, yeah. I popped in at the the moment when you went to mess with that guy in the bathroom and he mm. ragdolled all across yeah. the room. <laughs> it's janky as hell, but man, is that fun? I I was like when I was playing it for me, yeah. I was I was like, hey, what's up there, fucking hey, how you doing? You know, like I was doing it like I was a mob boss. I was like, I got some riddle in yeah. here, lady. You want some I like of this? <laughs> I'm doing it again this Friday. I'm going to finish the game. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw you yeah. didn't beat it. What's up, Jonathan? Eclipse gotta... was worth it. Yeah, we it still have cool. our eyesight. I saw... Um... And our souls. Yeah, I... I, they I looked us... straight at it the entire time. Raw right. dog. I'm fine. Oh, my lord. Uh, they let oh, us go man. outside of work to go look at it. They were like, you guys can stand outside for 10 minutes and watch this thing happen. I just took the day off. (laughs) They didn't even give you glasses. They're just stare at it. No, you had to bring your own. I didn't didn't wear no glasses. I ain't no bitch. Is that an energy drink at 9 o'clock? You don't know what I'm about. (laughs) Apparently not. (laughs) You don't know who I am. (laughs) Eclipse better be a horror movie. Apparently, uh, Larry uh, Fassenden wants to... uh, make one we well, were discussing it when we were talking about blackout does twilight count hey, cl- fuck you get out of here <laughs> go back to playing lucius You're i gotta welcome. be honest with you you want to talk guilty pleasures <laughs> yeah i know i, I watch them fucking too. love twilight <laughs> <laughs> my Dude, wife the, and i the watch them like the every best. other year i, I don't know i think a, i think eclipse is be- as the buddy best, the i have one. the box set back there <laughs> Dude, I, I think it's hilarious. It's like yeah. it's like the worst bad movie. It's like, so entertaining. It, it's really bad. <laughs> horror movies, not horrible movies. Dude, I feel, I hate to say this, and I know everybody, I, and I'm sure fucking Luke's gonna fucking hate me after this, but I kind of felt the same way a little bit when we were watching The Crow, but not as bad. Like, <laughs> just because what? of the what because of the heavy, heavy goth presence thing, you know, like. Uh, uh, well, you heard it here well, first, folks. Things. Alex says that Twilight and uh, the, Crow the Crow are the, are exact, the same similar. quality. Yeah, very Even, similar. Uh, the Crow, uh, Brandon Lee, he sparkles. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. You're. You're. Really, that, you know, it's kind of funny. You're looking at one side of the room here who has not seen the movie, and then the other side of the room who has. That's yeah. true, actually. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Old over on this side, young on this side. <laughs> How cause. The young boys. I am only young eleven, lad. after all. <laughs> Both have moody undead. See, well. already gets uh, it. When's the low life watch along? Uh, I don't think we're doing one, but uh, I'd rather we... eat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right. I uh, I I ended up. Uh, we're going to be doing our uh, review tomorrow. We'll be going up for you guys. Uh, 
Alex already has one. He overhyped the hell out of it. Movie sucks. I, I didn't it. overhype it. <laughs> no, no. For which one is Low Lives? Low Lives is um, it's really a uh, tiny independent film that popped up on uh, Tubi over oh, the sweet. weekend, and like it's uh, getting a lot of love from the horror space. Uh, we we just talked about it. We had to do a uh, something we have don't do very often, where we did like a little. Uh, non-spoiler in the first half and then spoilers in the second because it's one of those ones That's where I... you you have to talk about it like you have to talk about what's going on it's so hard to review if you don't. i did that for omen i like there wasn't any way around that mm -hmm. oh no no i was joking about that <laughs> I, i'm sorry <laughs> i thought you knew not nah, crow is amazing it's an entire mood i was there for it i was I'll there to for see you it. But I don't know, man. He, I feel like Evan's going to agree with me in the end once he sees What's it. Up? Okay. Well, we'll see. This is going to be the one happens. thing we do agree on, right? The one thing. <laughs> we have no common ground. None. None. No. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, but the uh, the Low Lifes is one of those kind of movies that uh, somebody was, I can't remember who it was, but they said they, did, they didn't like comedies. They don't like horror comedies at all. And they thought that was a good one. And it's not really a comedy, but you know what I mean? It's like, a, mm -hmm. it's just, it rides that line. And that, for some people, really kind of gets under people's skin, I think, right. when it doesn't, like, identify itself, like, insanely, like, openly. Yeah. And it kind of rides a couple genres a little bit, subgenres. I think people get a little weirded out by that, and they don't know how to feel, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. It's got some, uh, it's definitely got some comedy bits in it, but yeah, I, I like we were talking about it before you guys popped in here. Um, I wouldn't call it a horror comedy. It's, it's like, it's just, it's because, like, if you do, I feel like that adds the expectation of like, right, uh, exactly. Like, I, I, I kind of uh, compared it slightly to, um, and I feel like this is a terrible comparison, but it, for some reason, this is the vibe I got. It's like a, a less comedy, but very similar to the style of like Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I love um, that like, just kind of like the fact that it has a, it, it's taking that twist of kind of uh, what it it what you would expect from a movie like that, but it's not doing that, you know. Yeah, it's that 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 one's definitely more more uh, a, a parent, I think. Than, than Tucker and Dale's one. fucking awesome. Yeah. I love that movie. And did you I get your AC fix, Cynthia? I hope because <laughs> goddamn. That I found sucks. Low Life's very competent and clever, well acted. I was telling Eck, I was having. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, we got yeah. the news, CJ, on that. Oh yeah, oh, we'll be yeah. talking about it. Don't worry. Oh, you know, yeah. there's that's, not one stream one we our... haven't talked about that movie. Really? <laughs> that... I mean, really? That's yeah. That makes sense. And we've done six, I think. We like... we are gonna do Nosferatu, right? Yes, we're gonna oh, talk Nosferatu. We'll, okay. we'll, I was hoping we'd have a trailer by now, but fucking focus there features are other the... movies in the genre that we have on this list <laughs> we we i think i don't think there are any other spread. horror movies coming I think out this we've year, got Alex. a decent spread I, i'm actually just pulling up all the articles right now so we don't have to drive through everything but uh yeah, yeah it's been an interesting few weeks honestly mm. there's been a lot of news uh cinema con was big saw some cool stuff oh uh evan i gotta ask are you seeing abigail this week yeah, I, I wasn't planning on it, but I think I will. Uh, I'll probably go on Thursday night. Okay, then... Uh, hey, can we, thanks, hey. dude. Then, uh, you can, do you, would, you, would you like to participate with the three of us in a... Uh, there he is. ...a spoiler conversation? Uh, when? Friday or Saturday, whatever works for you guys. Um, Jesus, Saturday might work better, but Friday I'm packed. Okay. Um... Let me uh, talk though. to Christina and see because if Saturday that changes a lot for me. Oh, you guys, anyway. I, weekends are terrible for me. I, that's when I do everything. <laughs> uh, it's all good. Either way, Luke and I'll be there. We'll be doing them because you guys have been. Uh, I, I'm sure. I know some it's of you guys, guys have been there, but some of you guys have been watching our. Uh, Did you get him good? Our, good. He got our, good. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not even free <laughs> at all, so I can't even talk, Abigail. I don't even like vampires. <laughs> all right. Well, I will be there. Fine, I'll, I'll see if uh, and Luke's out too. <laughs> Nosferatu is going to be movie of the year. Here we go. This that one we'll have to do together because. Uh, <laughs> do you are you sure you really want to talk to me about that when that comes? I out? think it would be a good. I think it would be good <laughs> to have two sides of the 
you know, coin, you know. Why are you assuming you're going to hate it already? <laughs> I'm not saying I would hate it. I just know that there's a reasonable side and one that's a little too unreasonable. <laughs> All right, bitch. I'm totally, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> We're going right. to fucking well, talk about this eventually. Well, let's let's uh, let's uh hop into the news before you guys rip each other's head off. <laughs> I like it. Let's see. We're doing going. Right. Let's, uh, as always, uh, what does the chat want? You want to do trailers first or news? Oh, that's the trailers, guys. Come on. And then we get into the heavy stuff, and then you guys get all crazy. It's true. <laughs> it's true. We gotta warm oh up, you know, God. before we we run. Before we I don't need to. I'm bitch. I've been warmed up. <laughs> Normally, the the warm up is the entire show because we spend too long talking about. <laughs> That's a fair point. Yeah, Let, let's it's uh, very start, true. Let's start a count on how many times Evan's gonna call everyone bitch. So what are we <laughs> you know what happened is I I've been in Thanks, a Discord man. chat all day and we've been just like shit talking for oh, no, like no, eight I'm, hours I'm, straight. I'm for it. I just wanna. I just wanna start a count. Yeah, so now I'm just like full of. Oh, did you do that one? Do super chats first. He did leave a super chat. Yeah, I know. Is I, this I, I hit it. The Veil podcast. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Thank you, sir. Yes, two dollars Canadian. What is this that is... like? Two two cents. No. Two shekels. <laughs> this is for Alex. We're doing a belated well, birthday cool. stream for Buddy. Boy, oh, that's right. Yeah. For I Alex, told him, Buddy. I told. So, him, oh, he was like, oh, you're milking it for for a whole week. Oh come on! No, we're and milking like, it because we were like, late. I was like, I told them I didn't care. We didn't. Yep, need to. it's true. It's true. Now everything got fucked up because yeah. Well, so blame them. Honestly, the eclipse wasn't even the first. We 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 fucked it all up. Yeah, you did. We had to go, we had to go see. Uh, uh, hey Civil Francisco. A twenty four was like, go go to this theater that's an hour hour away from you. Yeah. And uh, and then and then Luke couldn't go. So I, I went and I, I bumped into Killjoy Jake while I was there and we hung out. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> totally didn't invite him or nothing. Yeah, you just um, bumped, happened to bump into him, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, Actually, he didn't invite me. He just invited Jake instead. <laughs> <laughs> it Donkey it shit. I don't I've know about it. Yeah, I, I actually heard it. about it when I was searching. Uh, I was looking to see if anybody from CinemaCon had recorded the trailer or did like a bootleg thing that night, and that kept popping up in all the little searches that I did for it. Uh, like people, it was just like randomly. It'd be like from four years ago, people talking about that show. It Thank actually you, did. Silhouette. I've heard nothing good about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what? The show Nosferatu. Oh, it's yeah. actually pretty good. It's really? Just, it it could have been better. It's That's Joe Hill, okay. isn't it? Yeah, the novel it, is, yeah. And it wasn't really that bad. It just it just it kind of lingered a little too long in some spots. And okay. it, it really I haven't seen different. it, so I don't yeah. Luke, is that the one that you wanted to do? Like uh we were gonna do a segment on? Like we talked about it like the first few months of our uh of I've seen podcast. some episodes of it. I don't remember to be honest. I think you want it because we were going to do something with television for a while there. That's uh, right. Okay, we that gonna, was probably because yeah. I've seen the first. I don't know how many episodes are in that season, but I think I've seen. I, I think I watched the first two or three, and then it trailed off. And I think there's a second season, isn't there? Mm. Does anyone know? Maybe I don't, I don't know. Remember. I didn't look that deep into it. God damn it! No, um, <laughs> I think there's a second, it season, a but it got canceled. I think. It is yeah. a commitment, but uh, I, I had to do it. I had to. Do I don't it. remember if it's. I, I don't regret it. The movie and your Civil great. War video is doing well, so it was definitely worth it. It was worth it. Yes, uh, both. It of was Mark Civil War. Yeah. It. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, that was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, it had two seasons. That was like a nineteen forties laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to laugh because that's how old it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday for my, my favorite, favorite ally. ally. There you go, Alex. You've been upgraded. <laughs> Neil Diamond, please been downgraded. If you know what that's from, you're cool. I like you. All right. You, did you just reference Jim Jeffries? I did. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> there we go. Um. All right. Let's see. I think we'll take a spin. Do we want to start off with the big guns as far as trailers Thanks. go? Uh, no. Since it's Alex's birthday, we'll we'll start with one I know he wants to talk about. Which one is that? You're just gonna have to wait and see, buddy. Okay, all right. Okay, Lord. Um, yeah, we're getting real, uh, real snooty today. That's the plan. Let's hey, DD. Uh, hey. no, I need to do this in a different window. Grim's here. Gremlin. Yeah, hey, everybody's buddy. here tonight, huh? This is awesome. 
Yeah. Where we it's take uh, an it's extra couple game. days off and suddenly everybody decides this yeah. is the No, it's it's cool. Uh the other thing I thought of is like are we going to have we're going to have to do a stream next Monday too if we want to get back on track otherwise we're going right? to switch the whole thing. I'm down. I'm down. I, I'm fine with it too. Mondays are good for me because I don't really have to do anything until like late at night. Yeah. And it's it's like my one four hour break or whatever I get, you know. That should be fine for me too, yeah. I blow off every <laughs> commitment that I have. Okay. That's on fair. Monday just to hang out with you fellas. That's fair. All I appreciate right. that. I'm glad. It's nice to have you, man. And, and, and then the group chat we have sometimes when it's late at night and everyone's asleep, I just sit in there. Just nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be active. No, no actually, the birthday, birthday month starts now. So for every pot, for every stream we do, we have to, like, collect money so I can get a new computer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that seems fair. That's a real thing, by the way, actually. I'm trying to get a new computer. <laughs> It thinks like old as fuck. Is it time? I it's that. oh yeah, it's time. Yeah. When I built mine, I I literally built it thinking I don't want to have to upgrade this for like five years. That's the like, way no major it, yeah. upgrades. Like I, you, I I'll add more storage, but that's what I was telling Christina. I was like, look, if I'm gonna buy a new computer, yeah, we gotta go to to get a good one. Yeah, yeah. Because then it'll last longer instead of having to get one every two three years. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna Thanks, start by with the way, buddy. Two. That yeah, was my last two dollars. So fuck I off, <laughs> dude. I'm totally kidding. Nobody needs to do anything. Why is uh, it still on the screen? By the way, the super chats take precedence over my face. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the uh, way you might want to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I forgot. Give me a break. It's I'm out of I'm out of. I was practice, gonna say, okay? Jesus Christ. You might want to yeah. go smaller than that, even. And I'm gonna. Eh, I can't. <laughs> I can't go any smaller than that. Uh, we should be fine with this one. This That's one... what we said last time. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, man. Like, do it. Just zoom back. And, and really just, cool it's now. just to get an idea, not necessarily like experience it. Thank you, silhouette. I love you too, brother. <laughs> oh, fine. This was great. What was it? Yeah, this, it's not gonna. It this trailer was playing in front well. of the omen, right? Oh, it's, I saw it there. It's, yeah, this will have to be. This will be the best it can get because it won't. Uh, with Whatever. it being stream, with it streaming into streamer, it won't. Uh, it won't shrink it down. It'll only shrink down the words. Hmm. Can you all put right. something over it? You're asking me to do all this. Stuff yeah, put your me. PNG that you normally put over it. Uh, I can see if I can. Let me see. Yeah, see, I think we can make this work. Hopefully. I may be getting older, but I'm getting smarter. Let's see. What Dylan's doing. a tape. That's what he is. He's a tape. That's what I see in the bottom here. I see a tape, and I think Uka Chaka, Uka Chaka. <laughs> uh, Didi, ah! by the way, uh, thank you for the uh, kind words on my song recently. That was very nice of you. I appreciate that. Oh, I checked that and out it. too. Thanks. Yeah. Not saying we have to balance it out. God damn it, Francisco! <laughs> Fuck's sake! Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, I figured it out. You got to do it in Streamyard. Can't do it in. Uh, can't do it on the actual computer. You got to do it on mm. here. That's smaller. Oh, it hasn't saved. There you go. Yeah. I still didn't balance it out, by the way. So there you go. let's be very clear. That's better. How'd you do that? Uh, literally manipulated the uh, the elements in Streamyard. I can do whatever I want. Do I a got. little bit more, just a little tiny bit more. Oh right? my God, you needy little bitch! <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, Cynthia. Yeah, I, I just I have another channel where I was putting up some music that I was working on. I I wish I could add a. Yeah, I can't just add like another PNG. It's being funky. But well, what if I did this? Sorry, guys. We keep getting stri copyright strike on yeah, our. Yeah, it's happened on every stream. It's not that it matters that much, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, to be cl to be clear, it's not striking. We're not getting stri uh, strikes. We're just <laughs> nice. getting claims. Swim. We're just <laughs> ah, getting claims. Yeah, I'm just going through all of our little uh, our little logos that we bring up. I'm trying to find one that will uh, will cover it if possible. I might have to make something. Uh, I'll probably just have to do that from now on whenever we want to do that. I'll just make like a little thing I can throw over it. All yeah, right, that's as good that. as it's going to get. All, All right. right, let's get into it. This should be okay. little maintenance. So just don't play see. any audio. 
No audio? No audio. Okay. But yeah, we're talking Kaku. Obviously, this is one we, we are familiar with. We've discussed it a little bit on mm. here before, but now we've got a full trailer. I think the last time we talked about it was like a 30-second trailer. All I can say is uh, Dan Stevens is having a hell of a year. Between yeah. Kong, this, and Abigail, uh, which, you know, we'll find out this week if that pays off. But mm. he looks fucking great in this. I'm a I've heard Dan he's great Stevens in both. Fan. Yeah, I, I love me some Dan Stevens, so I, I'm here for it. <laughs> Veronica. Uh, Alex, can you, you want to, could you take charge of the chat uh, this time around? Like, if what you just want to bring up, uh, just bring up comments and stuff. That way I can kind of, I'm going to oh, okay. try to keep I an eye on this in case on we get uh, stuff. So. Yeah, I got I got flagged for Veronica. Did you really? Did you really? Yeah, and, and I, because I didn't like it. No um, one liked it. And I was that? nice about it. I gave it like a three and a half. Or there something. were some people who were brutal on that movie. <laughs> Isn't that the, I think Stuckman did one of his last. Uh, his hilariosity. Yeah. yeah, he did one of those, one of the last times they did that. But uh, this movie, man, this is, uh, this is I can't wait. pretty intense. It I, looks I, awesome, yeah. They moved it to August. So, like, um, I don't, I probably just because it's a less competitive month, I yeah. would say. Because I think, like, between this and then, like, what is it? Like, a July was long legs. So I think they were going to have this come out at the end of May originally. And then it was going to go long, long legs July. They probably want to have a a little bit of a, a longer gap between those two, if possible. It's, I've heard it's been doing really good at the uh, festivals. A lot of people were, like, weirded out by it. Like, they don't know what to expect. They don't really know what to think after seeing it, but they liked mm. it. Mm-hmm. So Neon is probably right now. Yeah, they're oh, probably yeah. like on both sides of the fence going, I don't know what we do. Yeah, I I heard it was good at uh, Overlook just happened in New Orleans. Mm. I know um, Cody Leach went and he saw this. It, he put up a little, I think he has a full review out now, but he put up a little um, little like Twitter review or whatever he calls them. Uh, and he, he said it was really good. It wasn't totally his movie, like his kind of his kind of film, but like he uh, he really enjoyed it. So. That's, that's and yes, out of 10, Artie. <laughs> to his credit, Cody's very good at acknowledging when a movie is not for him, but still really good. Mm-hmm. I'll give him that. Yeah, he's very good at that. <laughs> I saw also a lot of people with the Overlook, with that went to the Overlook, that were saying really positive things about this. A lot of them, really. There was a lot of really great uh, uh They had a movies. fucking great lineup. I had no idea. Uh, yeah. I never, like, I had seen, uh, honestly, I'm a little embarrassed to say that Overlook popped up with uh, the whole like that. I, I had like a little ad months and months ago uh, for like press coverage and stuff. Like they were taking uh, applications and everything. Um, I didn't know if it was in person or virtual. I just saw that and I didn't look into it. I didn't look into it at all. And now I feel like a jackass because there was in a violent nature. There was this. Um, wow. What else was there? There was a bunch of shit there. Abigail was there. I mean, it ain't cheap, but festival, yeah, yeah, it ain't cheap, but uh, it's probably the best time to go to Louisiana because it gets hot. (laughs) It gets really, really fucking hot down there. Yeah, Arcadian was there. There was other ones that I hadn't even heard of that were there. Yeah, there's one called Bird Eater that looks pretty interesting, and uh, Dead Mail was also one that I've heard a lot of good things about, which is coming up. Um, we had somebody, uh, offer, there was another festival for this one. It was hum, uh, humanist vampire seeking consenting suicidal persons. I heard that was really good. Like I that was like insanely was really good. good. Yeah. That was one of those ones where I was like, I really need to, to check that one out when, What's uh, that about? When I, I don't think it. I've heard it. You haven't heard of that one? No. Uh, strugg- <laughs> struggling with her own personal ethics, a teenage vampire makes a pact with a suicidal boy after her family cuts off her blood supply in this sweet and touching tale of friendship and loyalty. So it's like Twilight. Interesting. And yes, Bro. but like wi- yes, but like way mm. more, uh, way more stuff. But they also showed in sparkles. They also showed Infested, and I saw the TV glow. Uh, and you know a couple other great ones here. Oh, oddity—that's the other one that I was really looking into. The one about the 
the mannequin that everybody's raving about. I love that movie, Mannequin. Hey, oh yeah, I'm sure he's got a Streamyard ad. <laughs> okay, that was unintentional. That worked perfectly. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, 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 it's, it's targeted because this is my, uh, I know. this is my only fucking like I only use this account for, um, Splattercast stuff. So yeah. it's always this Motion Array. All the fucking tools I use get targeted yeah. on this. It's some Garbo. That All scene right. in uh, Cuckoo, that the trailer where uh, Hunter Schaefer's riding the bike, um, is absolutely terrifying to me. It reminds me of uh, In the Mouth of Madness, you know, where they're uh, driving down the street and the one uh, character's on the bike. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know if you're fucking with me or not. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Damn yeah. it, Dylan. What the hell? <laughs> I didn't know. Just the way you said Why that. Why would you ever <laughs> think that Luke would be fucking with you? Yeah. Okay, listen. We're done. Dylan, get off the stream. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just not yeah, all here. Pretty you're, big you're it's going to fall apart without him, man. I don't know what we're doing. Well, it's okay. We'll go off the right. Is that the woman from Don't Breathe? Mm. What's our excitement oh, level? Oh, Don't on Breathe. This, Let's talk about uh, oh, I'm, Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang. Uh, no, I'm I'm currently right now, are we talking out of 10 or out of 5? Out of 10. What we do. Out of 10? I'm going to go uh, 7.5. I like, I'm excited. I'm 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 very much looking forward to it, but it could go either way. What about you, uh, uh, Evan? I'm at like a six point five. I'm like I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not like oh, maybe I will be once I actually see the movie. But uh, <laughs> but right now I'm just I'm, I'm looking forward to it. There's too Chill. much story, clearly. You motherfucker! <laughs> you, you're you're relentless. <laughs> you are fucking relentless. No, it's you know I'm gonna fun, I'm man. gonna make my witch video an hour long, <laughs> just so I can dive into the whole narrative. Should be a three part <laughs> series, three hours. Yeah. <laughs> See if you look at the leaf and how yeah. it has a a little drop of water exactly slowly off. <laughs> you can tell that water's not from the river nearby. That came from somewhere else, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> What about you, Luke? What do you think is Cuckoo? Uh, you know, I'm going to go in between. I'm a hot seven on that one. I'm intrigued by it, uh, but, you know, I, I don't know how abstract it's going to be. So, which I don't have a problem with. I just don't know how satisfying it could be. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know fully what the story is going to be. It looks interesting from the trailer, but, I mean, honestly, it could go either way. I could just be completely bashing it by the end of it. So I'm going to go seven, but I'm intrigued. I'm an eight. I'm ready. I like weird shit. <laughs> That's what I want to yeah. see. I want to see. I'm going to see shit. Sasquatch Sunrise. This I want sunset, to see that fuck. really bad. I'm seeing it on Sunday. <laughs> oh, nice. But I'm Is afraid it... I'm going to laugh at it too hard. Like, yeah, I think that's the idea, though, isn't it? It looks goofy as hell. I don't Is know. Is that playing anywhere near us, Luke? Because we, I, I tried so hard to get a screener for that. <laughs> I haven't. They were like, we're not getting those out. Yeah, I'm going on Sunday. I want to see that. The Witch Sounds three about right series, an hour <laughs> dissertation for each act. Yeah, I could do that. That'd be fun. <laughs> Let me I just rewatched all of Edgar's movies, by the way, like this week. This week while you're in anticipating. Did you <laughs> yeah. really think that it was going to summon Nosferatu? I was hoping. I uh, I did wear Very my witch, work. I did wear my uh, Vivich shirt to work today. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I s just in hopes that it would work, but I switched. A cure for yeah. insomnia. Fuck off. I got uh, yeah, I, I, I I got my new food. TikTok shirt in today. It says I eat cement. <laughs> and it's That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like that. Cement. I love it. So I I ordered another one, but the fucker shorted me. So I'm I'm currently uh in dms with them like hey where's my other shirt man what's up with that no i know silhouetted i'm just joking <laughs> let's see sasquatch let's see. Hey, let's, let's... dd's dd's ready oh yeah i'm excited i like weird shit yeah bring, I'm... bring the weird shit that is one uh luke sent me of uh, the bloody disgusting article and i was like yes i want it right if you guys now. If you guys like weird shit, watch a very independent movie called Motivational Growth. It is about a guy who is such a loser. He's never left his apartment. It's falling apart and mold is growing in the corner of his bathroom. He tries to, you know, himself and uh, falls, hits his head and wakes up to a talking mold on the ground. And then it spirals <laughs> into this trippy adventure and uh the voice of the mold is jeffrey combs 
Oh, that, that sounds, sounds pretty awesome, cool, actually. Mold me on yeah, that. the mold knows. <laughs> Christina knows. What's up? What's it uh, called? It's called Motivational Grove. Okay. Motivational it is Grove. hilarious and very creative. Let me see here. I interviewed the director when it came out years ago. Um, and uh, he's a, a video game designer, actually. Have you yeah, ever seen good. the um, digital games? What's the small studio that does all the video games? Um, the really small games that are like, I don't know, pretty popular. I just can't think of what it's called. They do. Um, I don't know, Alex. What, what from does software? Pretty popular, pretty popular. No, small it's, games? A dis- it's a distribution company. It's a, like a like the ones that produce it. They don't necessarily develop it. I don't know. They do a conference every year, and one of their conferences, a lady came out and started firing a gun. <laughs> it was all fake, you know, but it was See, really video games cause yeah. violence. Thank you for checking that out, man. I'm going to check out your uh, comment here. I literally was queuing up the stream as I got it, so I'll be uh, responding to you shortly, but thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, we had a fun time this week, gentlemen. Are you guys familiar with Eight Legged Freaks? Never heard of it. I appreciate shared your video it. on it. I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. Uh, it's yeah, we had a fun time revisiting that one. I mean, David Arquette. It's honestly that movie. Like I, I, I said it in our thumbnail, but I, I that is so underrated. Like it, it is aged like fine wine, in my opinion. I, I think that movie is so much fun. I'll have to check it out. The world building is is really good. I think it's underrated just because you think it's look legit. Um, yeah. Absolutely. It's mm-hmm. like, um, I don't I, I always go back to the blob and we talk about it in the video, yep. but mm-hmm. it, it really does feel like they do actually lay the groundwork. And I know it's like it's, looking at it, you're like, how good can this really be? But it is yeah. legitimately a fun watch because I didn't watch it in a while and I'm actually eager to go back and watch it again after just sitting there editing a video for so long. But sweet. <laughs> I want to really yeah, I saw it. it in the theater. I think I got a <laughs> I got an early pass to it, actually, when the I was first on a time. Station. The first time I saw Eight Legged Freaks was on uh, VHS already, so you're not that old. Is there a um, RoboCop game out yet? All right, I'll be right back, decent. guys. I just have something to do real quick. Okay. I'm, all right, no. well, take, make sure pause you send it. me pictures. Yeah. Well, pause yeah. it? Yeah, just press pause. <laughs> yeah. I'm, start, I'm, I'm starting my own stream. Mom, no, I can't right pause it. It's an online game. I uh, I heard the RoboCop game was, was, <laughs> That's was true. decent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by the way, the woman that sure. was firing the gun thing that I was talking about, it's Devolver Digital. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking they, about. They did all these, like, uh, in, these conferences that, you know, to make fun of the bigger conferences, and they started off with that woman who, like, goes crazy and her head exploded on stage. And the same director who did Motivational Growth also directed that. Cool. And he did like three after that because it was just so crazy. That's awesome. I'm going to check this movie out. This looks you really awesome. should. It's, a, it's very underrated. I have it pulled film. up on the other monitor here. Well, not the mo- not watching the movie, but <laughs> He's like, the I'm IMDb page. <laughs> He's like, I got to consume. Otherwise, I won't get uh, any time to. It's true. Robocop game is out. Yes. It's been out for a minute, too, I think. Yeah, it like, came out a little while ago. I heard it's really fun. Uh, motivational growths on Tubi. Yeah, is it? I yeah. own it on Blu-ray. It's, on Shit. it's, it's rare. On Prime Video. Well, it was rare for a little while. I don't know if it's rare anymore. Sure. Yeah, this does look pretty good. It looks like you said it looks pretty cheap, but it does look fun. Dude, yeah. it's one of the more creative, funny things I've ever seen. I like out there concepts. I mean, we loved uh, hundreds of beavers, which you guys definitely need to check out. So. That's a we'll talk about a unique film. Is that spring like, break in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good for Italy a second there. I was confused as to who I was. Shatner, right? Yes, yeah, Night of the Lepus, I believe, does have Shatner. Dude, uh, Impulse, uh, William Shatner, Impulse. Great. Impulse, yeah. So bad it's good movie, man. I love that movie. Kingdom of the Spiders. Yep, that's another one with Shatner. That's a great one, too. You know, Shatner's got a lot of really good ones, to be honest. Speaking of spiders, I've been so, like, wrapped up in spider content since Sting and then we have Infested. Spider content. Dude, I've been watching, like, on the stuff I'm not watching, screeners or, like, stuff like this. I've been going to, like, watch a bunch of old spider movies. Earth vs. the Spider, the remake from Stan Winston's company. Like, that has some 
fucking great effects if you've ever Sweet. seen that movie. It's it's definitely really really worth it. And that was the know. that was a part of that uh, line that Stan Winston did, where uh, he like made a bunch of concept action figures, and then they turned all of them into TV movies, and that was one of them. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It was it's definitely a time. Yeah. Definitely. Now, are we and pausing it, to do? We don't have to. I, I mean, we can keep going. I don't think Luke's going to care about the next one we talk about. This is more of a me thing. Which one? Uh, it's called Under Paris. Yeah, I don't know this one. Okay, well, we're going to watch it. <laughs> I was lacking on the trailers it's... this week. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a Hilton sex tape, too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was one night in Paris. Uh, no, this is a Netflix original. I, I'm in deep contact with... Uh, the people behind it, and you'll know why here in just a quick second. Is but, it going to uh, get flagged? Uh, no, it shouldn't. I don't think it will. Um, oh, it's because I'm not in the right orientation. Damn it. All right, here we go. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's what's going to get us. But uh, this, I mean, once you see what's in it, you'll you'll understand exactly why I'm, I'm all over this. But okay. it actually does look pretty cool. Um, looking into it, it's, uh, it, it's this French director... I am not familiar with any of his work, but it is something where the company behind it, they're really putting a lot into this. This is kind of like going to be their their big summer release, and they're putting it out on Netflix here in the States. So, like, awesome. it, it looks pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're really taking their sweet time to get there. I, I forgot that it was this long, but it's a shark movie. So um, I was going to say, what was that, a car? <laughs> I couldn't yeah. tell what it was. Shark movie. Right. Yeah, it's uh, but it, it it looks pretty cool. So yeah, it's like it's taking place uh, obviously under Paris uh, as the whole whole gimmick there. And uh, yeah, they're they're like doing the um, when they do that uh, that thing where they swim the the trench or whatever that whole whatever the fuck they call it. I forget. They talk about it in the trailer. But mm. uh, yeah, like they they do this whole thing, and uh, there's obviously a giant great white shark that's just harassing and eating people. So looks super fun um you know obviously it looks pretty goofy but it, they are trying to give it somewhat of a serious approach it seems like okay it so happens, that's gonna be 50 50 on my part but you know it is what it is all right i mean what i'll watch it i'm not mm. super stoked but i mean i'm, I'm willing to check it out it might be good well, when is comes it out in, comes out in june on netflix it's a good time to release a shark movie yep right so lots of lots of fun there I'll be watching Jaws around then. I'm sure it'll compare well. It's better uh, than Jaws. No one suspects the shark I mean, will be the obviously. killer. Absolutely. Uh, actually, a real quick thing. If you guys aren't familiar, <laughs> uh, Jaws 2 is actually a pretty great sequel. You can fight me on that. I probably will fight you on that. No, you, you don't understand. No it's way. A, Part 3 is the best. I've I'm seen the movie. A, yeah, I'm going to do a video on it one day, and you're going to see through your okay, own, I will too your own shit don't even don't don't even touch it don't even touch actually it. I like cruel jaws part five cruel <laughs> jaws. <laughs> Holy cruel jaws jaws five, isn't part cocaine five. shark like I'm We're not joking isn't that already a thing yeah, it is a thing yep cocaine yep. shark is already a thing <laughs> I thought yeah. I thought it came out the same year as cocaine bear so I think, I it, think it came out like a couple true. months later yeah dude they they had that <laughs> before all those movies came out they were still doing shark movies, and mm. those other shark movies came out after those shark movies. Jaws four is the masterpiece, please. For the Wasn't Lord there like no, a house shark? Or it was I don't like know. There's so many shark movies, man. Yeah, it was like swimming around in the house. Oh, Luke's back. There you Remember three headed I... shark attack? Mm-hmm. Danny Trejo. That one was great. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I definitely I remember three headed shark attack. I don't. So like I will watch a bunch of garbage, but I'm telling you, like there there's a limit even for me where it's like, no, I'm just not not everything's a winner. Yeah, can't, can't be honest, I'm like at a six on that one. All right, Evan, where are you sitting with it? I'm at like a five. It's like I'll probably watch it. I'm not sure. like I'll watch it because Christina will. That's hyped, yeah. but I'll check it out. Luke will watch it because we're getting the screen. I have for to. It. I'll <laughs> be honest. That that is the one trailer. <laughs> In prepping for this, I did not watch it. I was like, I'll just watch it on the stream. And then <laughs> like, halfway through. <laughs> so, you know, excitement level, uh, three. Uh, it's a shark movie. I don't know if it looks good or not, but. Yeah. Um, Thanks, guys. Maybe. I appreciate it. This yeah, Dylan, fun. 
It is just being always honest, watching man. all these shitty shark films. Yeah, well, sometimes I just need to be lied to and have my tummy pat and set them. This is an one. easy. T- this is an easy ten for me. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> there you go. See, an easy Luke, ten. Always back. Mm. Uh, I'm dressing see. up like a shark, even though it's on Netflix. Change the title to Cocaine Shark because Cocaine Bear. It's on Tubi if you're in the mood for it. Yeah, I, I might. You know, that's one that has been eluding me. Cocaine Shark is one that I, I should probably go back and at least check out i think i know all about it though because i think somebody i watch on youtube already did like one of those big christmas shark shark. santa shark is it what was that what is that a real is there a sharks on a plane movie no but i wish there was (laughs) don't speak too soon we haven't checked we should check that (laughs) why why hasn't uh snakes on a plane gotten a sequel that was a fun movie if there were sharks on a plane there would be no room (laughs) are you questioning the logic of this shit right now we're just talking like about three-headed person. shark attack. Let's go on a double-decker plane. Who cares? Silhouetted I mean, they just, could referenced, be in cargo. Uh, just referenced <clears throat> Deep Blue Sea, so he gets bonus points for I like that. Hey, wait a second. Sharks on a plane. It's a crash-landing plane that is floating, and the sharks get up underneath this and is, are breaking um, up through the floor. This They already have that movie. It came out earlier this year. You lie. No, it's called Don't Go Up or whatever. <laughs> Dogs wow. don't look up. <clears throat> no, it's called. What is that movie called? Everybody in chat knows what I'm talking about. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, I know what you're talking about. The one where the plane crashes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I forgot about that. Shark plane movie type. Shark plane movie. Yeah, don't uh, go uh, up. Uh, no, way, no way. Up, no way no up. No way up. Don't go up. <laughs> There's no way up. Santa Jaws. It sounds fantastic. Well, I'm on IMDb right now. Love that. Yeah, it's Santa Jaws. Yeah, yep. that's what I was right. Yeah. Yep. 2018. Holy seriously, I love the shallows. Both 24 uh, meters under. Oh yeah, four. Um, 47 meters down. I thought the first one was okay. The second one is much more fun. Not a great movie, but much Neither more of, fun. Yeah. Uh, I like the one with the blind sharks, but I do love the shallows. I thought the shallows was really well done for a more serious shark film. That was really well done. Well, let, let's circle back to the Santa Jaws business because I had never heard of it. <laughs> I've got the IMDb page pulled up there, here. Right? It's uh, it's Dude, got a four. The chat's which talking is good. to me. They, you guys can stay with Santa. Jaws. I'm pretty sure it has a candy cane like horn. Yeah. Does it oh really? And it's I see he's wearing somebody. a Santa hat on the poster. That's hilarious. Sure. Oh, it's on Tubi. It's really bad. Like, he's got a Santa hat on. Alive? What is DD? No, say? not alive. I was, I was hoping to win. Are you talking Mega about Ma- the movie, like uh, the plane oh, crash oh, movie with true. Ethan Hawke from <laughs> Jesus, where they have to eat each other? Thank you, DD. It's very kind of you. Next time. There's a lot of movies with people eating each other lately. You so, know, like TV shows, too. It, it looks like Santa Shark just wears a Santa hat. I don't see a candy cane. Oh, wait. I'm, nope. I see him impaling someone with a candy cane horn. Told you. I told oh, you. Found I, it. This, Nosebleed seats. Wait, they need to find a way to I've my, seen a lot uh, of fucking uh, Santa Jaws from The Silent Night, Deadly Night. And we'll be I prefer Slaughter House. I meant to hey, see that out. That has to be yeah. out already, right? Slaughter House should be uh, streaming you. Probably I, on something. I never got now. around to it. Yeah, it's I fun. appreciate Slaughterhouse. I wanted it to be better, though. Yeah, it's it's one of those ones. I we differed a little bit in our review. I think we both gave it uh, different ratings, but they weren't too far off. Uh, but like, I just that movie hit at the right time for me. It was definitely fun. Not as good as, as I thought it was there. He was vibing it. Yep, it was cool. I thought the it was scene cool. where they like it, they do the cat Something thing where you look away and then look back, and then it, that was the coolest fucking thing ever. I was like, oh my god, they're gonna do that every kill, please. We don't you have kinda... Hulu in Canada, Garrett. But if All you have Nord anyway. VPN, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Sponsor us, please. I use Express. Sorry. <sighs> All right, brother. Whatever, dude. <laughs> all right so what do we get next what's that uh isn't there a, a vpn that's a shark or is that the am i thinking of the ds thing that hacks the I video games dylan and the shark is listen it? guys all right all right all right all right yeah yeah we're way all right, right, all right all right we're really deep in the shark i'm blaming dylan right on this one okay all right i had my fill thank you guys appreciate it no worries buddy Thank you for for accepting me for who. There's a dude who, on like, like Jack Black so and we're gonna get the shadow love child <laughs> 
So not much of a trailer here, but I, I did say we were Dylan, gonna yeah. we were gonna chat about this one here. So Dylan, did you see that one there? What? <laughs> Why does the dude on the top left look like Jack Black and Emil Hirsch had a love take child? Off your pants and the <laughs> I'll take it, dude. I'll take it. I'm all for it. Is bro. this uh, Bambi? That's not it. Yeah, this is Bambi. That's not even <gasps> like a. I'll take that as a full blown compliment. Wait, That's is this the trailer this out part. already for this one? I didn't get. For Bambi, yeah, it is. This is what they played in it's in like front of the teaser, movie. Right? I this didn't see it in the theater. Oh, okay. It didn't play when I saw Blood and Honey too. I know that was fucked up. Yeah, we, I know. We shat on Canada for that. In the, yeah, we did shit on Canada. Thing. It is the the Canadian government's fault that the Bambi the Reckoning trailer didn't play <laughs> after Blood and Honey too. <laughs> what a tragedy! They were like, "No, you can't fuck." This. Yeah, this <laughs> we shit. can't have oh, this shit. Right? Okay. So I, uh, I was thinking yeah. about this. I'm a little. I'm curious to see, like, because obviously there's going to be a lot of these over the next little while. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out how objective I can be now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? What? Just because you you have some kind of a, well, just a like, connection with the fellows now? You know, there's a couple things with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, you know what I mean, though, right? Like, I know what you're saying. You yeah, guys have sacrificed you. your authenticity. Well, this is what I'm trying to decide. Does it make sense for me to review these movies? After <laughs> this? I'll I still will. Yeah, I, obviously. I'm not still... too worried about it, but I have well, wondered about that. Speaking in in tongues, Evan, there there's a movie coming out that I'm ready for it. has a lot of connection for me personally that I, yeah. I'm gonna have to review. So yeah, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I, I if I can do that, you can do this because yeah. we're gonna be in the same boat. So I you know. used to do interviews, or I used to do reviews of the movies and then you know interviews you afterwards. So and a lot okay, of times they respect it. I don't think this one I'm worried about. The only one I'm thinking about is Pooniverse. How I'm going to review that. But anyway. That's, there's a lot of Pooniverse going on there. It's yeah. like <laughs> A lot of Pooniverse. What are you up saying? Until, that, up until that, that point, I'll be fine. Get that honey shot. Let's go. Uh, but how are you guys feeling about the... I actually don't think the CGI for Bambi looks that bad. It looks no. way better than I thought it would, right? man. Like, I don't know if my expectations are just... Especially for the I mean, CGI aspect of these movies. They were cool. astronomically low. So they're going to take out his mom, right? And that's how it's going to happen, right? That's how it's going to begin, right? No, it's like a reverse Jason. Are, I think his mom's already already got got, you know what I mean? He looks pretty old, but maybe, you know. <laughs> He's a big boy. He'll come up out of the water, you know, and like, ah! <laughs> uh, Nosebleed Seats Man says, is uh, Abigail Context. going to suck? Anybody able to prepare me? I've heard nothing but fun. I've only good heard, things. like, pretty good things. I've heard fun things, and... It goes further than the trailer shows. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've heard too. I heard. Uh, all right, I'll just out him. But Cody Leach was saying uh, Lost Boys comparisons, and I, I oh, am and that like, from coming from him. That is big fucking praise, and that's what I'm saying. Like I, that's like I his don't shit. feel that at all. But like I, but like I, I don't I'm get that at to, all. <laughs> I'm trying to keep that out of mind. But like he has been, he was, he was big on. Oh look at that, we're in the. Oh that. what. Look at that. Look at Whoa. <laughs> no. Whoa, it's going deeper. Oh, no, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> but, uh, no, no. yeah, no, we, uh, but yeah, he said Lost Boys comparisons, which I'm kind of sitting here like, dude, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's, if that's the vibe true. is he said that it's like, it's as, it's as fun and as gruesome and as, and as like, it, it feels very. Cause the trailer like, just looks kind of generic to me. It doesn't really. The, sold to right. Me. Yeah. So. Right. Right. I don't, I don't know. think. See, I, I, I see. For me, uh, that is such an iconic movie that is part like cool, and also very, um, you know, I don't know. It's more cool than it is funny. Sure. Night Gremlin. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Thanks, bud. Uh, let's see. God bless you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the bigger question: Will Bambi: The Reckoning traumatize as many kids as the Disney film did? Not a chance. Let's hope. No. There's no, no way, because everybody goes into the Disney film as a kid expecting a cute. You think it's gonna be nice, movie, yeah? And, and then they fucking get, get his mom in five minutes of the movie. I don't know how long it is. It's like twenty minutes in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Garrett. Lost Boys is Cody's second favorite movie of all time. Crazy. So like, he probably means that it just it it is cool to him. So maybe maybe that's what it is. You know, yeah, some cool of them better better show up now. We'll have to wait and see. But there probably better be some punks in there, or I'm not gonna enjoy it. 
Alex Cody Leach and Sean movie. Chandler saw the, saw the premiere of Abigail at the Overlook Film Festival, and it was their favorite film at the festival. Okay, well, that, I mean that's good. I'm I'm excited that it's at least like competent. Like yeah. I'm more interested in like. it now. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. I mean, this is that was the thing. Like, I had no interest in seeing it, but then I started hearing like what some people were saying. I'm like, all right, well, maybe yeah, we're I'll, going day after tomorrow. I think I might go check so, this out. Yeah, that'll be going up the old Valley View for that one. We're dressing up like the tickets. Frog Brothers, so yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we need to commit one of these one of these times. Big movie. That's for us. We need to do that. So yeah, anticipation levels on this one, round robin. What are we got? Bambi. Um, I mean. I'm more excited after Blood and Honey 2, but I'll give it like a six. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I I just don't know if it's going to bring what I'm looking for out of it. Mm. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what the order Evan, is. We go. got moved around. We got moved around. I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I, I'll probably say I'm around a six as well. Like, I definitely have more confidence after Blood and Honey 2. Like, if this trailer had come out without me having seen Blood and Honey 2, then I would be a lot lower than that. I probably wouldn't be thinking about it at all, but I'm, I'm definitely more interested in it. But, you know, I gotta wait and see. <laughs> I'm gonna go five right now. I mean, like, at, at uh, all the stuff that they, they've said for the whole Pooniverse deal, and what is it called? The Twisted... What is it called? Twisted, twisted Childhood, Childhood Universe. Thank you. Um, and This one doesn't necessarily... isn't something that I'm absolutely intrigued by, but what did yeah. they say in the little teaser or in uh, blood honey too it was like some sort of sickness or something remember it was like so, a little... yeah it's like a, it's like a, a crazy virus. deer thing yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a mad deer virus i kind of yeah. want to see that story but overall like the concept isn't something out of everything all the other stories that i'm excited for but yes. you know it, it's something it's like the spectacle of it so in the cgi yeah. did not look as atrocious as i was expecting it to no so, and if it looks like that the whole movie like yeah <laughs> so I'll go five. I mean, I'm, open, I'm going in open-minded. It's just not something I'm overly excited for. Bambi versus oh, Godzilla. I'm sorry, Dylan. It's yeah, such a goofy I'm, name. I'm getting it's it great. tonight. Go ahead. <laughs> what is your what is what are you at, Alex? You uh, you yet? know, I I definitely it definitely brought down the score for Par under Paris a little bit. I'm definitely I'm actually more interested in Bambi the Reckoning. Oh, me too. Really? Okay. Yeah. Me too, definitely. Yeah. yeah. The, the two I'm looking forward to out of the most of this are, um, and I wasn't looking forward to Pinocchio at all, honestly. But when they described it as being more like child's play, and they described one of the elements they're going to put into it, I was like, okay, I can get excited for that. But I, I think, yeah. uh, I think I'm more excited for Peter Pan because that just seems like the genuinely like of all the stories, the creepiest one they could probably bring to screen because that's already kind of a weird story to begin with. I mean, I, I do like here. So go ahead with what you're going to say. And then I want to talk about this. Pinocchio can make for a good horror IP, man. That's I what can, I'm saying. I can tell you that much. I mean, again, like I've mentioned this last time, I've like played Lies of P recently, which is a Pinocchio game that like kind of took like a gothic horror approach and it worked really fucking well. So they, they could definitely do that. Like, I still think Peter Pan could do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Isn't yeah. That one that they're doing, they're trying to do like a nightmare on elm street version of it yeah it's gonna be Peter more Pan, like never nightmare, on elm street nightmare. Kind of thing. uh but yeah this is actually something i i agree with not on the sense of like uh you know just it being like needing a horror remake but i actually really think the black cauldron is a pretty solid disney flick that i feel like nobody talks about they're doing a live that. action actually of it are they really i think i heard something about that recently. well now yeah. that's terrible i'm I'm upset because <laughs> they none of those. Isn't it with the munchies and crunchies guy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know how they're gonna fill that void because that's kind of the an top odd left thing. guy is paid by Big Poo. Listen, you don't need ah! to know who's sliding me he's, checks, okay? He's got that All big right? poo money. He does. I, do. I got that big poo money. Yeah. No, I didn't get the. We didn't get the fucking uh, little jar of honey that they were sending out to everybody. Oh, he got a money. Bullshit. He got a honey shot though, which honey I'm pissed shot. about. <laughs> uh black holdings underrated absolutely puniverse yes they're they're making uh an mcu style oh. about here it's about to get brandon made. are you serious <laughs> scott said peter pan is going to be high tension and inside mixed with the black phone he did say that yeah what that's, yeah no that's, that's what i'm saying i think that's the one that's going to be doing much better i think it's going to end up being better all right well that's the one i'm most interested in now 
Like, what? <laughs> Can we officially rename him Top Left Guy? <laughs> I... Yeah, why aren't our names up on the screen? What I don't know, they were. They're they gone were. now. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. We got hmm. caught in the inception. Yeah. Yeah, it probably got lost somewhere. I don't know, it's a setting. <laughs> I don't uh, but anyway... Let's uh, move on. What's the next one? Uh, uh, we've only got heavy hitters after those speak ones. Speak no evil. You want to do that one next? That's the only one we got. I always oh, get no, speak no got, evil. Got... Maxine last, and then yeah, we'll yeah, Maxine on to the news. will be last, and then we'll do the. Of course, we'll do. Uh, yeah, we'll get on with the news, and we'll start with Terrifier. How about I that? always mix up speak no evil with coming home in the dark. Because, I feel like their premises were similar for some reason. Or maybe I'm just completely hallucinating and my brain has connected those two things for no apparent reason. I don't, I don't know if I know the movie you're talking about. Coming yeah, Home in the Dark? Either. It's another, like, I think it's a, I think it was in New Zealand. It's either Australian or New Zealand, but it's like a kind mm. of similar concept with, I think there was a really similar poster for them too. Um, so I got really confused. Coming Home in the Dark is fantastic, by the way. Uh, Dead Meat mm. gave it their movie of the year when it came out in the Dead Meat Horror Awards. Um, it's very is that good. Is streaming? I've never heard of that. Uh, right yes. Hold on here. Coming Home in the Dark. This uh, is the one we need. To yeah, it's on Netflix. Well, shit. I gotta get off here, guys. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Seriously, though, <laughs> watch that movie. It's fucking awesome. This one we have to be extremely careful about because this is universal. So. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah this keep is... it as little as that. Yeah. yeah that's, that's where I'm gonna leave. Literally. Though. Just for You're like, up. Oh, I, I just got six uh, emails just now. <laughs> the, the, the stream just shuts off. Are you trying to promote our films, you son of a bitch? We try messaging uh, Alex, and he's just not answering. Listen, no, please. There's someone man. breaks in my door and shoots you're me. You're coming in here <laughs> running the show by bullying me and calling me uh, Jack Black mixed with Emil Hirsch, which, again, is a compliment. <laughs> I like that. But... Uh, Listen, who's no, worse, Paramount or Universal? Right? Universal is worse for claiming videos, in my experience. Both of yeah, them are, uh, I mean, Paramount is not good, Thank but you, like, BD. I, I got my Smile review up, and it was fine. I could not get my Halloween Ends video to not get claimed. Hmm. So, fuck you, Those Universal. Beats, beats agrees with you, Evan. He says it was his number two. Of it's really good. It's really good. Hmm. I'm gonna have to check it out now. It's rough. Like, it's not fun. <laughs> it's a dark movie, but it's very good. We gotta hurry because I gotta get though. to this. Uh, I gotta get to the news. This makes me want to talk about. One me of the news. too. <laughs> <laughs> FBI, open up. <laughs> yeah. Alex, yeah. they're coming for you. you got Did you make a right? video about our movie, you son of a? Yeah, universal. That's what annoyed me with the Halloween here. ends one. It's like, man, everyone hated this movie. I made an hour long video praising it, and you're claiming me. They didn't fucking care. I know, but I even disputed the claim, which means someone looked at it. They manually checked it. Yeah, that's the thing. Once you manually look at it, the only thing you can do is actually take them to court. Well, and the issue, too, is if you try to dispute a second time, you risk them striking your channel. So I was like, I'm not doing that. Like, fuck, man. Mm, it was yeah, depressing. It's a, little, it's a bit unfair. Apparently, They're so proud of that video, that. and I can't monetize it. <laughs> Silhouette says Paramount's uh, legal team is very ugly when you try to. Uh, oh, I bet. Try them for fair use. I've never so had an issue with them. I don't They're remember never, having I don't any issues when I was doing my smile video, which I think is the last Paramount video I did. So I speak didn't... no evil. Obviously, we just see what that thing is right there. Yeah. Um, why it's called that? <laughs> which is, I feel like a really big spoiler. Maybe yeah, that's... I don't know. Well, Luke has seen it, so he he can he can give us more insight. Luke, comparing this trailer to what you've seen, I hear a lot of people are upset with this trailer. Yeah, uh, wait, am I the only one that's seen it? I've seen I'm it. not. I don't think I've seen oh, the original. I've seen it twice. I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. um, I do love James McAvoy. So. so, Alex and Luke, then, what are you guys thinking? I'm iffy on it. Uh, for me, I wasn't sold at all. I, it has a it, for me, it has a different tone, a different feel completely. Where, um, you know, uh, Dylan and I, we door. had to watch uh, the uncle, and it's a that's a foreign film as well as you know, obviously the original Speak No Evil. And I, I think there's I don't know a subtlety in the tension that some of the foreign films have as opposed to more Americanized films. And there's a particular right. instance in here that annoys me where it's like. Are, 
just a different, almost a different beat where James McAvoy says, I'm a doctor. And then he says, I'm not. And then, then he says, no, I'm just kidding. But I had him, you know, and it goes way different. It, it goes differently in the actual original. And I think the tone intention is different there. And I, yeah, that's how it, I feel throughout this entire trailer. I'm, I'm with you. I don't, yeah. I don't know what it is, and I like McAvoy, so it's weird that he picked this one. This seems like a very weird grab for him. Yeah. And so right. the only thing I can think of is that there's such a big twist that maybe he was like, well, I got to try this. But I, I know he likes playing bad guys a little bit, so maybe His performance he just in hasn't Split had one in a still while. Like... I was going to oh. say, yeah, Split is, He's I mean, so honestly, good. like Split and his perform his performance in Glass was just about the only thing that made that movie worth watching. I Funny Games it. gets a pass, by the way, for me on a remake because it's made by the same director. And I actually like both versions. So <laughs> That's I. a movie I keep meaning yep. to watch because I, I still haven't seen it. But I feel I, like in different circumstances, I've been recommended it like five times in the last two months. So like... I, I like movies to... like this, like Speak No Evil and Funny Games. Yeah. I like that uncomfortable movie. There was, yeah, there yeah. was that, the, the the Speak No Evil one that we saw, which I really liked, I felt was a little too slight. The, the uh, well, where was the country? Was it Norway? Uh, I, you know, I can't remember offhand either. Or Iceland or something. I can't it's remember where it was. There. I remember, I remember when I reviewed it, I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't think I really related to the material as much as somebody from that area mm -hmm. yeah. and and somebody from that area pointed out that that would be very true because there is things in this movie that are so like norway or whatever it is finished yeah yeah they, uh, that, that i wouldn't get and that that i shouldn't get so i was like okay well good i, I don't feel bad then but you know like the end of that movie a lot of people really shook i wasn't so much but i'm wondering what are they going to do with this? I, yeah. I, I just, I don't know. Just with that different tone. And I hate to keep kind of going back to Blumhouse. It's like they're just not doing no, anything you, you right. You can beat them up. It's yeah, fine. But, I'm you know, cool it's just it. like, it, it does have that feel to me where it's like a general audience feel where it's like they looked at the original content and they're like, okay, well, how do we make this so that, you know, people are going to want to go see, people who just want to go see a horror movie are going to go see this and don't necessarily you know, when you watch the first, the original Speak No Evil, I think that sits with you and you're so uncomfortable that, you know, later there's going to be a discourse there between people who have seen it and you're not watching it to have a good time and be scared. You know, it, it accesses a different part of your brain. Whereas, like, I feel like this one is just like, hey, we're, it's like Night Swim or Imaginary. It's like we just got to take that <laughs> original content and then apply it to the Blumhouse model. I think. I think if you just go into it looking at it like a Nick Cage movie where people who are usually like, I just want to go see crazy Nick Cage, those people, like, I'm not making fun of them, by the way. I'm just saying, like, if you go, and go, oh, I want to go on the McAvoy crazy guy train, you know, like, it kind of makes sense. But I feel like it's a disservice to the original, maybe. Sure. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. We got a couple in here, so uh, they'll probably do the same thing American remake of The Vanishing did and happify the ending. Uh, from what like I understand, from what I understand, it's like this would be like completely a disservice to the material if they made this like a happy ending compared to how they ended the last one or the re or the original. Like it, it would be completely spitting in the face of the of the material mm -hmm. itself just because of like what it's supposed to represent and everything. Mm -hmm. And right. I, I still have not seen the movie. I, I do plan on it. Uh, we, we did a little like um, most anticipated with Ashley and Ken from sledgehammer horror. And this was like on Ken's list, like up there. Like, I think this might've been his number one or number two. Uh, Cause he loves the um, original, original and him and Luke uh, and Ashley were all saying that I need to watch it. So he it also doesn't like trick or treat by the way. What he said oh. that when I was on oh. when I did the show with him, we were talking well, about like essential eh. Halloween movies, and he said I'll he be, uh, does not like trick or treat. I'll be sending him a nasty text message. <laughs> <laughs> Take my video down. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know. Here's your sixth recommendation: Evan, see Funny Games. All right, I'll watch it. I Funny have to games. because I'm doing the Strangers franchise. Both of them right are now, actually so. really good. 
I have a hot take on funny games. It came off as the director kind of trying to make us feel bad for watching the movie. It's a whole conversation. Hmm. Kind of trying to make us. Yeah, I'm kind of curious now. (laughs) Not many people are agreeing with you on the vanishing there, buddy. American vanishing was bullshit. Look at that. Wait, which one? Am I getting (laughs) confused? Is that the one with what's his name? The dude? I don't know. Am I getting confused? The one with Kiefer Sutherland in it and, like, the dude? The dude? The the Big Lebowski? Yeah, that guy. I can't think of his name. Jeff Daniels? Jeff Bridges? Jeff Bridges. No? (laughs) I don't know what this movie is, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that. I don't know it either. Just think of, like, weird Americanizations. Have you guys watched Broadchurch, that, like, British detective show? I've heard of that. I've never... It's one of the best shows, like, ever made. The first season is, like literally a masterpiece the music is incredible it's, anyway it's an amazing show but it's british and then they remade it and like americanize it but it's not like it's in a different language so it's really oh. confusing um as to why they did it but anyway broadchurch is amazing you should watch it yeah jeff bridges and Kiefer sutherland is the 1993 version and then there's the 1988 one uh with uh okay it's a french movie so there we go. And I only here's saw the big the, one. <laughs> I saw the one with Kiefer Sutherland and Jeff Bridges first, so I didn't know. But. All right, now let's get on to the the main event. What we've all been waiting for here. We're talking Maxine. Obviously, this is something that we've been very excited about. Yeah, guys, I gotta know. Luke did uh, a masterful dissection going into uh, his thoughts and opinions on where he thinks the story is headed, and some theories. I, I quite enjoyed that video. I was too busy seeing Civil War, so I could not partake, but I think he locked it down pretty solid. But I want to know, starting with uh, Alex, what are your mm. thoughts on Maxine here? Well, obviously, we got a, a a theme now for all three, and it's all about being a star. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, think, I think this one's probably going to be the more abrasive one, maybe? I think it might be the more, like, uh, raw. Mm-hmm. Whereas the first one was kind of raw too, but it uh, it was a little simple, you know. I think this one's going to be a little bit more complex and uh, leave us with a mystery a little bit. So I'm yeah. hoping. Oh yeah. And I, uh, I, I don't know how much jalo it's going to be, but you know what I mean. I think there's there's definitely uh, shades of it. You see a good chunk of it in the in the trailer. Visually, here, but, yeah. Uh, Evan, your thoughts, your take. It's good bring that up right when we see the psycho house because that I mean Bates Motel and seeing the psycho house I just, that made me so excited. Um, I I'm you know what I'm honestly slightly mixed, and I'll I'll tell you why. So I I think it looks great. Like I have no doubts that it's going to be a great movie, but there's also a part of me that feels like there was something so like stripped down and simple about the first two, and they kind of work so well as this little duology. And now we're branching off into a much bigger world with a more complex story and more complicated characters. So I'm I'm a little weary that we might lose some of that, like, just kind of straight to the point nature of the last two. Um, I don't think it's an objective slight against the movie at all, because I have no doubt that it's going to be a great movie. Ty West has proven over and over and over again that he's amazing at this. And Mia Goth is incredible. And the cast is fucking ridiculous like yeah, that's this part. movie's gonna be amazing there's no like i have no doubt that i'm gonna have a blast with it but there's a little part of me that's like i feel like there was something so special and i just don't want to lose that i think it is going to be a little bit disconnected from the other two it, that's than, how it yeah. feels to me those kind of had like this tone that worked really well together you know they're the same location um a, a lot of the same locations anyway but to, to say <laughs> just to stay this could be more inspired we won't hear it. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm like this is what I'm saying. This movie is going to be like incredibly well made, and I'm not doubting that at all. Right. You just don't uh, want it to sh- overshadow everything. Yeah, and I, I also it, it very much feels like it's X and Pearl, and then it's going to be Maxine instead of this being like. Obviously, we're gonna have to wait till we see it, but it doesn't feel like as much of like a cohesive trilogy as it does like that was the first part, and then we're doing this. Well, we got there's okay. Can we? Do you guys know? a few jalos and slashers that you might be mm-hmm. able to compare it to because i'm getting um the one what was the one with the 
ah, I can't think of it. It's the Bava one. The really famous Bava one. The uh, uh Blood and uh da, 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 Yeah, da, da, Blood da. and Lace. Blood and Black Lace. Blood and Black Lace. That's what I'm getting from this one. And I'm also getting because they're they're obviously doing Nas the Psycho as well and mm. a few others. But Blood and Black Lace was wasn't she an actress? She was getting hunted by somebody yeah. and like it's a classic setup for Giallo. Right. It, like, it's it's very Giallo-inspired, like, 100%. But it's not 100%. That's the weird thing. That's why I'm, I'm like, kind of curious. Like, is it going to... I don't know. Because people are really weird about Giallos, man. Like, they get really picky. What did you think <laughs> of Malignant? I love that. Me too. I fucking love Malignant. Yeah. We've talked about that. We love that movie. Yeah, like, it's great. Um, Luke... You you obviously had your your video, but uh, just refresh us a little bit on your takes, your thoughts of everything you're seeing here with uh, Maxine. It's a wretched film. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I guess I look at X and Pearl. Um, th- there's a, maybe a simplicity in that story, but they have such a different tone that you know. I guess I'm not necessarily worried about the complexity of Maxine, which I I understand what you're saying, where it's like you have you have the idea of Maxine being in Hollywood to be a star and she's in the adult film industry and we have Kevin Bacon kind of coming in. And then you have the whole Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez thing going on almost, you know, kind of paralleling things and, you know, going on simultaneously, which, you know, I, I, I think it's just a device where it's just going to be, you know, we're mixing in. Oh, um, you're good. You're good. Uh, the deaths of, you know, uh, the Richard Ramirez Night Stalker and then someone who's either going after Maxine um, I drew some uh, comparisons to Psycho where, you know, yeah, she is going to the set of Psycho and, and visiting the set. You know, it, it's a great little nugget for horror fans. But I think, you know, for me, I compared it more so. I think Ty West is more so dropping something in there to tell us more so about the story. The oh, yeah, novelization yeah. of uh, Psycho 2 actually takes place in Hollywood and is very much on sets and things like that. And it's a departure from the actual film itself, but you know, Psycho, uh, they have Giallo inspirations and and everything, and then you also have Kevin Bacon kind of coming in as, um, you know, we have the private detective in the original Psycho. So you know, I, I kind of compared it to saying I think maybe either maybe uh, Maxine is doing the killings herself, maybe we have this person split personality and she's not even aware that she's doing uh, the killings. Ooh. Um, what is this Scanner Darkly movie? Remember? Oh yes, yep. Kind yeah. of that vibe. Well, what's his name? I can't think of the, um, the writer, but uh, damn it. Yeah, I can't. God damn, I have the book and I can't even think of it. Uh, but so like, I think maybe they're gonna go that route with it, just because I think yeah. the Rich Ramirez idea is just kind of it's gonna be happening. It's it's a time period. It's fun to to introduce that true crime element to it. So I think it's going to have that different feel. I think it will be more complex. But I also think, you know, we have those elements that we're drawing from just the cycle franchise in general. So I think it will be more complex, but I think it I think it's going to go in line with the trilogy just because I think Ty West trilogy is just you don't get anything like this because Pearl has uh, Pearl is just an absolute cinematic thrill ride. X is just I mean, what Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that classic kind of, you know, Slasher, slasher 70s slasher and then this one is just straight you know giallo true crime all that stuff so did anybody catch the nod in there to sleepaway camp yes, yes. yeah i thought that was very fun there's a lot oh, of nods to camp. a lot of good stuff in here oh, i Dick. yes ty west knows horror yeah oh I mean, yeah like there's no question about that i gotta say i think uh to say my little piece on this um i think that Sitting on what you just said, Evan, um, I think that uh, is there a chance that maybe it's just because when X came out, you know, it was a little late 24 movie, you know, horror fans knew who Ty West was. Even some horror fans didn't know or really care who he was. And then Pearl was kind of like, you're in the you're in the club a little bit. You know, you're excited for this because you know Mm. it's coming out. But ever since Pearl everybody and their mother has now been excited for uh maxine because even like people who aren't into horror are excited about this movie it's oh, yeah. it's become it's huge. a huge phenomenon so it's like maybe that's where you're getting the sense that it won't be as special 
because I, I, I personally, when I saw this trailer and I, I saw it in theaters. So like, I, I got to see it on the big screen. So it was a very transformative experience just to see all the colors and everything, how they're supposed to be presented. I, I'm very sold on this concept. I love the true crime element. I love the whole connection to the Richard Ramirez case. I, I'm very, very much looking forward to this. Um, I was talking to Jake about it uh, after the screening, and we were talking about how this is supposed to be like a whodunit. And like all of those elements in there, I, I think this could be, it, it might be complex for the sake of being complex, is I think what some people are worried about. But I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it, it is going to be a pretty straightforward story with a couple of little twists to it. But I, I trust Ty West. I think that he understands what this trilogy is going to be. I think that he's. Uh, I think he's had this all figured out for a little bit. So I, I, I think this is going to be a nice cherry on top of it. Will it be my favorite out of the three? Probably not. I think it's going to be hard to beat Pearl for me, but that's yeah. just me. So yeah, know, this one seems like a ride, man. I don't. It looks yeah, like I don't disagree blast. with what you're yeah. saying. Like, I, I don't think I'm worried that it's going to be like overly complicated. I think that part of it, it's not that like it's this huge like super well-known ip right now it's not some like hipster you know too many people know about this now so it's not cool anymore i think part of Agreed. it was that like x and pearl were so exciting because they kind of just came out of nowhere and they came out nine months apart like it was Fair so enough. cool i remember seeing the trailer for x and being like oh, okay whatever like pretty generic slasher concept and then like going to the theater on release night with like two other people there and i was just like holy fucking shit and then nine months later, Pearl comes out, and you're like, "What the fuck just happened?" It, it there was like a novelty to that, that I think was so cool, and that's probably part of why I'm not as excited about Maxine because that novelty just isn't there anymore for me. That is true. Um, and I also, th this is like completely subjective. The setting just doesn't appeal to me as much. Um, but I'm not like I'm not saying this is not going to be good. I know that Maxine's going to be great, and I'm super you excited do like to the see woods. it. I do. I do like the woods. <laughs> I do like the woods. You rotten bastard. Um, yeah, no, it's. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I just feel like I'm less excited than I was when X and Pearl were coming out because they just came out of nowhere. That means that you're just going to be surprised. And I hope it's so. It's going to be amazing for you. I hope so. Tampering your expectations. Too, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And yeah. I, I like the take that uh, both Luke had and yeah. uh, with the whole psycho connection. Uh, but yeah, no, I definitely feel what you're saying there, Alex, about the the Mario Bava stuff. Like, it, it's very, like, not just from the color, but, like, the way that they're setting it up, that it does very much remind me of, like, a blood and black lace kind of storyline uh, in a way. And I, I think it's, you're going to get a lot of that. I think that that's going to be something, because they don't, they're well, not they kind of bite off each other a little bit in right? that whole Jalo thing anyway. So it's, Yeah, you're not going to, I don't, I don't think they're, they wouldn't, like lead with that in a lot of their press material like ty west wouldn't just be saying like oh it's very very much inspired by uh this genre or this or anything if he didn't mean it because like obviously with uh like pearl he was saying was like uh the horror um uh wizard of oz in a sense is like what he wanted to bring to that and that's exactly what it feels like it feels like an old wizard of oz movie uh, oh, yeah. with some horror influences so i love and, pearl so much and the other I thing is too. It's 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 he seems to be very wholly American about these past mm, movies too. That's a very so good point. To, to to see that there is Baba in there is a little weird, a little. So maybe it's just echoes of it, not necessarily on the nose. Sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know. True it's, Detective's it's, dark as hell. Did you watch the first season or did you watch season four? Season one. Okay. Yeah. Season one is it's objectively fucked. the best season. It's yeah. dark oh, as I fuck. Se season four gets dark as fuck as well. Um, the middle two seasons, uh, season two sucks. And then uh, season three is like uh, not as dark. It has some dark moments, Season one's great. It, it's such a good. Yeah, season, season one's a complete yeah. package. Yeah. I'll take that to the grave. Couple it's not my favorite show of all time, but it's, but it's very good. Blade Runner. Love Blade Runner. Can we do? Uh, oh, we're going to do Terrifier. Yeah. Well, what do you want to do? It's your. It's we're making. Uh, no, up no, 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 no. It's fine. We can do that. Let's get that out of the way. Because to be honest, we've talked about it so much. I feel like. When is the date? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying it's gonna ruin he it wants, for me. Like I, I don't want to. Really? Yeah, I just want to watch it. I don't want to talk about it as much for whatever reason. 
Like, I feel like I'm excited about it. It's not it's nothing wrong with it, but I'm weird about that. So it's like. Okay. Okay. Anyway, boys, <laughs> we can discuss this. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, um, I mean, Jesus. No, it's you're fine. You're fine. I get Come it. Come on, do you guys treat it like it's better than Freddy Krueger? Come on. It is. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, I'm genuinely, if you wanted to ask me which one I'm, I'm more excited for right now, I'd probably say Terrifier 3 over Maxine. Oh, me too. 100%. Really? Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, wow. like, ter- I, I think there is a <clears throat> going back a little bit of what I just said here about Maxine. There is a bit more of an unpredictableness with Terrifier 3 than I think there is with Maxine. Maxine's going to be exciting. It's going to be really solid, I think. It's going to be something that I'm really happy with. But, like, I feel like as far as things... If I'm going to get a similar experience to what I had with Terrifier 2 with Terrifier 3, it's going to be one of those things where I'm going to walk in there and there's going to be a moment in this film where I'm going to be like, holy fucking shit. Well, that is, uh, I did not expect that. And I, it's only because we've gotten it in the last two films that I'm like, okay. I think part of the reason that the excitement for Terrifier 3 is so big is because it's kind of like this movie is a deciding moment in whether or not Art the Clown and Terrifier is like the immortalized slasher icon of yeah. our time. Because we haven't had Jesus. something like that happen <laughs> really since the 80s. We haven't had a new slasher icon that like went down in fucking history since the 80s. So I think because Terrifier 1 was kind of like this experiment to like show off what they had as like a sizzle reel, 2 was this like, you know, fucking huge explosion where Leone went, this is what I fucking got. And then it feels like if 3 is as good as, if it's as good as 2 or better, then we're just solidifying this franchise as something that hasn't happened in a very, very long time. And that's really exciting. Mm. Yeah. To me, like that's where I'm at with it. Luke, what are your thoughts? And then we'll kind of just brush over the specifics of all that we, all that's happened the last couple of weeks, you know, subpar film. Um, no, that's not, that's my, that's my gimmick. But, um, you know, that's what I'm excited for. Obviously, my lens is clouded. It's it's holiday horror, so anytime you put anything... That's in the that, other thing, too. Probably probably Christmas thing. horror, man. Yeah. I love it. Um, but, you know, like, I think this one is... If you look at, like, Maxine, where X, I absolutely love. Pearl, I love. Maxine, I know I'm going to enjoy, you know, and there's a strong narrative there. Where, like, Terrifier, for me, I the first one... Like Evan, Evan called it a sizzle reel, which is absolutely correct. Where you know, it didn't narratively, it didn't really have the flair that I wanted. It didn't have any narrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, and so going into Terrifier Two was a bigger question mark. I didn't know how I was going to feel about that film, and then yeah. walking out of it, it's like, I love it. You know, so like three is like, what are we going to get? You know, it's that question mark of what it is that, what's huge that going question to look mark. like. Yeah. I think that's yeah. that's that excitement that you know you can't buy, you you can't manufacture. It just is kind of that. You know, Terrifier is that horror gem, I think, for especially people that are, you know, deep rooted in the horror community where it's like, oh, my gosh, we've unco- uncovered something, you know, we didn't know we needed or we're yeah, ever we going to had get, something like this you know? in so long. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, having that that third one is is like, what's this really going to look like? What What is <laughs> Damien Leone going to give us here? Um, you know, and is we have we're getting a three. But then does that lead? For you know, like how far yeah, it's is like what's coming goal? next if yeah. there is a next, you there's know? so I many questions, there'll be more, there'll yeah. be more for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's where it's like, that's why I think it's just like the the unknown there of what we're going to get. That's why that level of excitement's there. That's the other thing, Garrett. All I can say so far is every appearance of Art the Clown has been better, everything that Leone has made has mm-hmm. been better than the last thing he's made, yeah, which is another reason sign, that it's sure. so exciting. It's always a, a thing, and, and like quite thing... a bit better. The thing that really blew me away about the second one, and I think why I'm excited about this too, is because like I didn't expect shit from the characters in the second one, but I'm actually oh. like super excited to see what they do with Sienna and where her story goes. Um, I really want to see what they do with Lauren Lavera. I, I I'm excited to see that, and we'll uh, we'll kind of run through some of the highlights uh, real quick of what's going on. So obviously uh, they had a little bit of a. a panel at uh, CinemaCon for Terrifier 3 where they just announced nothing, no sizzle reels, no trailers, just a big old Art the Clown poster there, and the official confirmation that uh, they did end up renewing 
uh, their deal from Terrifier 2 with, I believe, the company is Icon Events Releasing. Yeah. So they're the people who uh, put out Terrifier 2 last time. So they did that whole slow rollout of getting it from like uh, one weekend event and then they let it build out and build out. And, you know, that was super fun. I don't think they should go that route this time. Personally, I think they should try to get I it make as sure. many theaters as possible and just like let I couldn't it go. see two in the theater the first time. It didn't play anywhere near me. Um, so I, I, I mean, wow. obviously this is going to have a wider theatrical release. Like I caught the movie when it came, I think it was when it came to screen box and then I saw it when they re-released it in the theater, uh, which was fucking amazing. That's like the per you got to watch terrifier in the theater. It's the best way to experience it like bar none. So I'm really hoping that this is like wide enough that I can go see it like release day. I, I agree with you there, uh, Cynthia. That was something that there's been a whole yeah. thing about that. Apparently, I don't know why they keep uh, like brushing them off, but they've been trying to get him in the game. My, uh, and my, then my thing is with the uh, with the uh, Terrifier, just real quick, is like I am I like it. I'm not against it. Everybody is a little bit more excited than me. I think um, I'm waiting for it to fully realize yet. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I feel like the third one is probably where it's gonna be like it takes off. That's my hope anyway. Yeah. Um, and that's but fair. I was I not mean... sold on the second one. A hundred percent. I didn't like some of the story elements. I didn't mm -hmm. necessarily like the, the, the final girl necessarily a hundred percent. Really? I thought, they, I thought it was that's a little such a rare too criticism. I, yeah. re I rarely ever hear anybody say that. Well, well, not, and, not like attacking. That's actually interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, I, I, I really genuinely feel like it, it, and I know it leans heavy on its, you know, Freddy, the th you know, Freddy stuff, but the, the whole, it, it had that Langing camp feel because he wanted to go that way, but it just, it kind of bothered me a little bit. It, it kind of took away from it instead of making its own thing. And that's what I get bothered by a little bit with it. Same thing with the Halloween trilogy. It, I want it to be its own thing more than borrowing. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? And I understand that there's a level of homage that you can't avoid because there's just so many slashers to borrow from that actually made an impact. Like, and he's made an impact, obviously. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just want it to be its own thing. You know, I want it to be its own creative thing. And that's where that when it does that for me, and I'm hoping that the third one is going to be the one, then, then I'm all on board. You know, I feel like terrifier two was so unique. That was one of the things that I love so much about it was that it just felt so different. I think it felt uh, jumbled to me a little bit. So I think, um, you know, it got us on board. I think I can speak for Steve? both of us. This because we had uh, like such low She's expectations. So right. you know, I think that was like a that was that was a it was a it was a monumental step up for us. But I don't know if like, would you say you had low expectations going in, Alex, or were you pretty? Uh, I had very low expectations going in because mm -hmm. I did not like the the first one. I liked two moments in the film. And that was it. Well, three moments, but the acting was really rough. The lighting was terrible. And, uh, you know, but I was OK to look past that because I knew it was an indie film and I give them more credit than normal. Yeah. But I think I, I did not feel the excitement that everybody else was feeling. I felt like Evan does that the uh, the origins of him were more scary than than we got in that film. Okay. But I do like what they did in the film, just like I like what they did in part two as well. I just feel like it's a little too jumbled. And she, mm. like Cynthia said, it did feel a little too derivative. And I really feel like, and that's, and that's, I think fine. derivative was asking you if you thought it was too derivative. Of yeah. Nancy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm agreeing with her. I'm saying it is too derivative. I don't think she's saying it was, though. You thought. It was a little too derivative of the Nancy character. Yes, yeah. that's what she means. I don't think she's saying that she thinks it's too derivative. She's no, asking. She was asking you no, she's she's saying that he. Thinks I'm answering her question. She said, "Okay, all right, I'm, I'm so you're tired. You're losing me. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> you had me, and then I was, and then I read it twice, and I was like, hold on a second, Evan. My buddy that? got really <laughs> mad at me about this whole movie, by the way, and like we got into an argument over it, like no. Doubt. Oh, so you have a vendetta? You have a personal? No, life. I have no vendetta whatsoever. Uh, I was just, no. be, I'm speaking 100 percent honestly. <laughs> 
Listen, I, if you don't think Art the Clown's the greatest thing since sliced bread, <laughs> then you get the fuck out of here. Did you I see like All Hallows' Eve, Alex? Like back in yeah, the day? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. I liked it originally. Yeah. Where his origins were on that more because it was scary to me. It was raw. Yeah. And I um, agree. Oh, I actually like the original pepper, Terrifier pepper short film movie. more than I like the Terrifier, the first Terrifier movie. Right. Yeah. No. I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Totally. I agree. Hundred percent. But yeah, anyway, I'm not trying to like my opinion doesn't matter. It's just it's just I'm just saying that for me, it just felt that way. Like sure. I don't I don't grab onto it as much as everybody else yeah. does. And I felt like a lot of the slasher community for many years was grabbing onto a lot of stuff before this way too easily, like sure. way too quickly. Like like uh, what was that Bones movie where it was like something Bones? Uh, people were like talking Lovely about that bones. like it was the next. No, it was... um. I can't think of what it's called. It was okay. It was like this game that they played, and it was like bones. There was like actual bones, and you threw oh. them on the ground, and then like not bone not tomahawk. Bone tomahawk. No. That movie's Good great movie. though. Yeah, yeah, it was something bo- bones. It was a slasher movie. I can't remember. I, I, I understand the hunger. I understand the hunger. I know people want a slasher again, just like I do. But I just, I don't want to prop something up in it too soon. You know what I mean? Well, that's why I'm saying, like, that's why three is so exciting because to me, that's like sure. the deciding thing where it's going to be like, is this that or is it not? Right. Fair enough. I, I just don't want to disappoint myself. I guess. Sure. By putting too much of my eggs in one basket. Yeah. You know sure. I mean? Vanessa Millen says the first Terrifier was better. Very cool. Very hmm. Bone jingles. Thank you, Sinister. Interesting. What's up, dude? Bojangles. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, bone jangles. People were talking about that. I've like, never basically. heard of it. Never, never heard of it. Neither when I. it first came out, there was like people just instantly like, oh, slasher, we gotta raise it up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We gotta watch it and like dissect mm. it. And... And you said that's the best slasher of all time? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were talking about? No, I, I'm I'm honestly though, I, I appreciate that we had this conversation. Yeah. Alex, so we get a little bit of your input on this because I I'm I'm curious to see now now more than ever I need you to make sure that you see Terrifier three day one because I want to know what sure. your thoughts are on that because and like, I, you know maybe it's because I'm just like Freddy is my favorite slasher sure. yeah I love how creative he is and for someone to slightly borrow I totally get it I would feel very much the same way if I were writing a character <laughs> Captain Howdy great again so. Uh, I feel you. Now, let's just discuss the last couple of bits, then we can move on to the story. I know you've been dying to talk about, Alex, <laughs> and I have too. Uh, but Daniel Roebuck is joining Terrifier 3. He's playing Santa Claus. That's going to yeah. be pretty fun. That's going to be fun, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely, he's uh, he's been in a ton of horror stuff. I mean, Rob Zombie films mostly recently, but he's a very recognizable face. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Leone is pulling from, you know, the usual pull of getting in recognizable faces from the indie horror scene and the fact that terrifier three has wrapped production today. So that is super cool. That means in my opinion, I think that we could have a trailer as early as the end of next month. So what do you guys think? Are you thinking trailer sooner than that? Or are you thinking by the end of next month is pretty I'm safe? I'm not expecting it, it to like July. I would hope it'd be at the end of summer. Yeah, I'm thinking it's like summer. I think like, that's too. That might be too close. I was thinking I like late like, July. I'm hoping it's late because I don't think it's going to be too soon. Maybe. Hmm. I actually love it when people have hot takes on popular movies. Oh, I me too. Few, many, yeah, no, that's why it's super exciting whenever we can get Alex. It's and it's genuine. Part. I'm not just throwing it out there because I want to be a <laughs> douchebag either. Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's I get that boring. too. Like you know, there's also. I was just saying that. I no, had no, some no. I didn't mean anything by that. Oh no, I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, I'm saying like you, Eric, Listen, he was one Evan, of the high points. Off, right. I was also just saying that like I'm not all that hyped on Maxine, you know? So uh, yeah, fair enough. You know, I, we've I think all got we could these. get an updated I see I'm with Artie. I think we could get an updated teaser by the end of next month. I, I think like I don't want them to overmarket it. Normally when uh and, and this is like you look at this with most any movie, whenever they have a uh like uh they announce a wrap of production we don't have that long to wait until at least yeah. like a, a teaser trailer or something. That's true. Uh, even if it's like, you know, a minute and 10 seconds, they're going to show something usually. Yeah. Now, granted, this is a much smaller film, so right. they could be holding off, but I'm I'm pretty sure. That's nice silhouette. Thank you, man. Thank Please you for coming. Really appreciate it, dude. Yeah, thanks for chilling, buddy. As always, sir. 
but that's just where I sit with it. I think that uh, it's going to be here sooner rather than later. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm as uh, I think doesn't need to be said any further. We're all looking forward to this one. Oh yeah, unless yeah, you're it's Alex. a piece of shit. Don't watch. It. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Luke's like you just took my thing. Come on, man. Um, no, I'm okay with it. I'm okay. All right, you know, that's, that's why. That's because favorite. we get. That's why we get along. Is mm-hmm. because we're very, very similar in that. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's get into it. All right, Alex, I'm gonna let you take this one. Right off. Oh well, no, no, go ahead. I, I, you probably know more of it than I do because you took actual notes on the the arguments and stuff. Oh well, we can talk about that. I just meant like because I I know. This was the story you were real excited about, so I want to hear your yeah. takes and opinions, and then we'll kind of move into it. And okay. Then I'll, I'll talk about that after. So but, we get... uh, The Blair Witch yeah. is being remade by Lionsgate and Blumhouse. Take it away, sir. Actually, I've been talking too much, so I, I think everybody else should talk, and then, then I'll come back to <laughs> I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll talk yeah. a bit about it, because Blair Witch is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, yeah, I mean... It's interesting because like there there are three Blair Respect, Witch movies yeah. at this point. Respect. Um, we had the first one, then there was Book of Shadows, and then the Blair Witch in twenty sixteen. Yeah, thanks. So. Yeah, twenty sixteen. That was eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh my yeah. god. Uh, okay. When I started the podcast. We watched that movie That's together disgusting. with my buddy. <laughs> it's weird because like a huge reason that Blair Witch is still so huge is purely because of the novelty of it like there was nothing like that when it came out um and people believed it was real and it's also i think part of the reason that movie is so impactful well i don't think it part the big reason that movie is so impactful is because you never see a goddamn thing in that movie and it makes you use your imagination in such scary ways like i'll never forget watching that for the first time and i still find it like really unsettling even though you never see a damn thing in that movie's just soundscape and implication um, what's that remind you of by the way <sighs> no not that the two movies that came out that were very just soundscape skin and... yeah yeah and mm-hmm. what's the other one uh, are you saying outwaters I don't Outwaters, think yes. That. I still he haven't he seen it. He hasn't seen Outwaters. I still so. haven't fucking you watched really it. You really need to if you like it. I probably it. would really like it. You would like it. It's very good. Um, yeah, There's no story, though. I, so. I don't... Shut up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. God damn, Alex. Now you're just being a hater. There's totally a story. <laughs> Evan, <laughs> dude, I love you to death. I know. Please don't take it that way. I know. It's just, it's a wild thing. It shows that you really know nothing about now filmmaking. You, now you've crossed um, something that's going to tick me off. So no. <laughs> I, now I have to defend even more. Um... Yeah, I'm not really all that interested in the Blair Witch remake. I mean, like, obviously I'll see it, but it's like neither of the sequels captured anywhere near what the first one did. And I just don't see, especially coming out of Blumhouse, I just don't see the kind of, like, subtlety that needs to be present for Blair Witch to work. And I also just don't think, like, even if they made something that like accomplish the same sort of thing with subtlety it just wouldn't work as well like that's one of those things where it's just lightning in a bottle and you can never recreate it it's the same thing like you look at the texas chainsaw massacre franchise that series has never managed once to capture Mm. anything about what made that first movie so good that like dreamy surreality not in any of the other movies the documentary feel because you just can't recreate that thing there are some movies that are lightning in a bottle blair witch project is one of them you know, and, no, I feel you. I think that's that's a very fair take on it because it is kind of like time and place and where yeah. everything was, and it's it's gonna be tough to get there. And that's why I think like it, there are good aspects to it that they need to just kind of focus on that and focus less on trying to be what that first film. Also, was. don't Luke, shoot it in fucking four K. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work. Well... Luke, what was what was your opinion on uh, on this? How are you feeling about it? Uh, you know, I watched the Blair Witch Project. Uh, I came into it late. I'm not the biggest found found footage kind of horror fan. But, um, you know, I love things like the Outwaters. But, I, you know, I, I think there is... It, same with the original Blair Witch, where, you know, it was made on such a limited budget. You know, it breeds creativity. And I feel like trying to recreate it now with actual... So many studios involved where it's like, well, we can do this, we can do that. Um, I just, I don't think it's going to work. Like Evan, you said lightning in a bottle. That's exactly what that was. I remember when Blair Witch came out and I was a kid and 
you know, I hadn't seen it at that time, but you know, the discussion at school was, oh, this is real, and they caught it, you know, on on camera and all this stuff, and it was just you couldn't escape that film. It was all yeah, over. It's never going to happen know? again. Yeah, and na- nowadays, you know, you you can't really pitch that as it's real, and you can get something like. Uh, the Outwaters, which I absolutely love, and I think you know that's so well done. But you know, we talked to Robbie Banfitch, and that thing was made for what, like fifteen thousand, or if that. Yeah, it was like um, eleven thousand. Yeah, is what he said. And and it's it's like when you have a studio involved like that. Again, too many things at your disposal. It's not going to feel real. It's not going to have that punk rock feeling to me. It's probably going to feel hollow. It's going to feel presented by a studio. So, you know, it's something where. Um, I don't know if you even touch it, you know, it kind of dusting off all these projects like that, where you can kind of give these creatives uh, an even smaller budget and say, well, if there's a project you've been working on, let's, let's pursue found footage, but let's not do Blair Witch. Cause yeah. it, it's had its, it's had its run. You're not going to get better. That's than the thing. The like why do a Blair Witch, just do a different found footage movie. You're yeah. probably going to have more success doing that. No, because then they'll say they bit off of it. There are I'd rather that. that. I would prefer there that. Are, there are elements in the Blair Witch that you can't recycle without like seeming like it. Yeah, well, yeah I'm not I mean, saying like... that they should like just take the script and change the name of it. I'm saying they should just approach a different story. Just do something sure. different. Um, there's a couple comments in here I want to highlight before we move in. But uh, I, unironi- I unironically love the Book of Shit Oves. Um, it's fun. I don't dislike I, the movie. I think there's a lot of great ideas in there. And I don't think it's a terrible movie after, like, I especially after watching, like, Good Bad Flicks' videos on it, where he goes really deep into the production of it, uh, there are a lot of really strong ideas in there. And I, oh, yeah. I just think that it never got to be fully realized, which is kind of uh, kind of upsetting. Uh, haven't seen The Outwaters. Uh, heard very different takes on it. Seems to be a love yeah. or hate it. Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to get that. <laughs> Uh, the fourth kind was a decent attempt to blur the lines. I, I have yet too. to see the fourth kind. I hear it's pretty I, decent. I heard a lot of bad things when it first came out, and then it's mm. one of those things where it's like I've heard a lot of nothing but good things ever since. People so, were like, trying to outsmart the movie. They were mad that they tried to lie to everybody. That's what Garrett, I remember. Garrett says, uh, well, I actually happened? got an audition for the Blair Witch Project. None of us knew what a phenomenon it would be at Shit. the time. Very cool. That's really cool. Uh, didn't the studio app with it too much? Yes, with the uh, Book of Shadows, they did. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Cynthia. You know, when the movies are controversial, you fall into liking them. Yeah, that's Skin of Rank that bored me to tears. Yeah, I, I wasn't some a fan of Skin of Rank either. I got some shit for it because I put that as my favorite horror movie of last year. Yeah. It was up there for me. I think it was yeah. like number three on mine. Uh, Again, there's up a theme there. there. I don't know what it is, but. It was just the one. Uh, come on now. To be <laughs> fair, my favorite movie of the year was Oppenheimer, so you can <laughs> sit mm-hmm. and spin. Um, <laughs> Uh, Skin of Rink was just the one that I walked away like the most excited from. I was like, that's fucking so cool. All right. Your turn, Alex. Give us your you take. You don't have any more to say? No, I mean, I will. I just, I, I'll you talk. You didn't really when, say your opinion I'll on talk. it. Well, I, I think it, I mean, I, I, I pretty much agree with these guys. Like, it's, it's one okay. of those things where I feel like it's lightning in a bottle. I think that it would be better to take ideas from the Blair Witch and mm. kind of not necessarily again try to make a blair witch sequel make a movie set in the universe make a sure. movie that takes place around there maybe they you find more footage different. maybe they do something but like it, it would be more interesting to me if they almost cloverfielded it where it's kind of like yeah these are kind of related but they don't necessarily have to be direct sequels because well, i feel like you can't i, I feel like it is one of those things where you're never going to satisfy everybody you're never going to convince everybody because of how like crazy that first one was with its phenomenon and everything everybody wants that when you say blair witch but you're never going to get that again i like what they did with the video game i will mm. say that i thought the video I game was supposed to be the Steam. sequel of blair witch by the way or played it yet yeah and i i thought that that was a really cool idea and i wish they would have uh kind of tried to adapt that in some way that was um, yeah. But like it's it's again it's one of those things where it's like that might work for some people that might not work for others. I never Steam. played it, but I watched uh, like a story explained video on it, just explaining the whole it outcome. Uh, the Blair know... Witch game is the technically was written by um, what's his name? Who did the uh, Blair Witch? Who wrote it? Uh, the the, tech, the original, or the, the third one. Oh, um, Adam Wingard. No, Adam Wingard directed it. He didn't write it. 
Uh, it was with his partner. I just can't think of his name. He did Seance. No, I'll no, stream yeah. this Blair Witch game because it's sitting in my Steam library and I haven't played it. Uh, it it's uh, it Simon Barrett. Simon Barrett uh, yeah. wrote it. Uh, he wrote the 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 story that was to the witch. They actually used that to make the video game. That's what he told me. Cool. Because nice. I asked him about it, and he is very upset about that. Uh, people hated the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. He's just done with it. He's like, "Well, fuck you. I don't care." Really? That's like he was. He you could tell. I mean, he's not mean about it. I'm just saying, like, it, it was his baby, and he True. really wanted to make it good. And I really enjoyed. There's it. a lot that I did like about the 2016 one. I really liked it. I mean, I understand that it didn't have the same elements, but like you said, lightning in a bottle, you're not going to. Yeah. You got to take a swing sometimes. And for me, that was a good swing. It wasn't a perfect swing. Yeah. I think the biggest it, thing is that like Blair Witch Project feels like found footage. Sure. Where like I get the it. 2016 Blair Witch feels like a found footage movie. Like Frogman, how they kind of went back to the old form. Still haven't seen it. Oh. I need to see it. I, know. <laughs> I didn't ask uh, for. I didn't get a screener for it. I'm sorry. They they definitely have that old school thing going. I've been a fan of the Blair Witch ever since the beginning. I love it. I yeah. am. I have a, a, a kind of a mixed take on this one because if you know Jason Blum, he worked with Orrin Pelly on Paranormal Activity, yeah. which was the movie that was compared to the Blair Witch Project yeah. the most. And outdid the Blair Witch Project in some ways too, um, but Blair Witch definitely gets the the, the the lion's share of the 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 compliments, and you could say the last broadcast if you really wanted to kind of compare some of that to it. But I think it's that's a different. fascinating movie. Um, I own it, but it's not a I great too. like it's, it's not, not a very great watch. Yeah, no. um, like I, I remember said, like it's missing a lot without spoiling like, anything. Like I remember watching it, and I was like, all right, this is really cool. And then you get to the last like 15 minutes, you're like, okay, that kind of just sucked everything out of this movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a great historical piece, but it is cool. And I have the, what is it? Eight films? Is that their label? There's a really cool release of the last broadcast, a very nice Blu ray. Um, There's two things that I really like I about the Blair Witch on. the time changing and being stuck in hell. Yeah. The looping is it's great. 100% Blair Witch, and they did it in Grave Encounters. But yes. kind of like in a doorway sense in the part two. It did. Which a lot of people didn't like part two, but... I like Grave Encounters, really dude. Like i got to be honest two. with you. I like part two because it was creative time. as hell. But it wasn't as scary as the first one, so a lot yeah. of people really didn't like it. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, I, I think Jason Blum, he worked on Paranormal Activity. He, I just saw a, a thing recently where he was talking about how he pulled the sheet off the bed in Paranormal Activity. Yes. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, fuck, I forgot he was he was a part of that whole. He was like actually involved. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was like, so in a way, you know, it's almost like he's better suited for it than most people. Um, but Granted, Paranormal Activity their... Next of Kin was dog shit to right. me at least. So and also their that was track record is not really good right now. So really? Yeah. The, the, that's the most recent one, right? And the Next of yeah. Kin, the one where they got to the woods. I heard that was pretty good. The really? end of that movie is terrible. I hmm. fucking hated that movie. It, it oh, felt like a hayride. You guys are the first dude. ones I've heard say that movie sucks. So really? To... I dead ass. Everybody oh, that I saw, I watched me. a bunch of reviews for it. I heard it was good. That's shocking to me. That's wild. The end of that movie made me feel like I was sitting on a fucking corn maze hayride. It's horrendous. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I trust. <laughs> I trust you guys more than I do the other people I watch. But like, good lord, that's that's shocking. That's another one where it's like I've never heard like it's dog like shit. with uh, yeah. Alex and Terrifier too. I that, I've never heard that. Criticism Someone say the that Sienna movie. wasn't a good final girl. That's just not a criticism I've heard before. <laughs> um, it's yeah. terrible. It is. It fucking sucks. It it it's, it has some promise in there in the middle, like in the second act or something. There was some weird shit that happened. Which yeah. takes oh, place okay. in the same universe as Blood Rain, huh? That's I'm I'm funny. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna finish this off and just say yeah. I am open to it. And I'm hoping that it's it's the worst idea on the surface and underneath there's actually some hopefully, you know, I love up. the Belial prof profile picture, Scott. That's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would agree. It's it's definitely um, it's one of those movies that it, you got to uh, pretty much like I'm out of focus. It's almost as exciting to learn about the Blair Witch as it is to like watch it for the first time like mm. i feel like 
when I saw it for the first time as a kid, I was one of those things where it's like, this was so overhyped for me. I didn't see why it was scary. But as I've gotten older and as I've watched it, learned about it and stuff, I could see more of the terror kind of manifesting as it's gone there. It's been a really interesting experience with that original film for me. Mm -hmm. But really quick to touch on it. And then uh, I see Evan is fading quickly. So we'll... uh, I've got energy. There is something I need to talk about, though. We are going to talk and about I've that. I've still I was got say, energy for that. I was going to say we'll we'll finish this up and then we'll end with that, and then I think we'll <laughs> we'll go with this. But uh, there was some drama that came up with uh, the whole uh, Blair Witch announcement. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, is it how do you say is it Joshua Leonardo? Oh, yes, Leonard? yes. Leonardi. Leonardi. I think it is Joshua Leonardi. Point is, he's uh, one of the. Um, original people who worked on the first film and it, as it turns out he wrote this big long post on instagram leonard. uh leonard he was uh talking about uh just all of the work that he's been doing behind the scenes apparently since like 2016 pitching and prodding at Lionsgate and blumhouse uh and all these other studios that they tried to pass the the ip off to uh, trying his hardest to get a proper sequel made and how he has just been had the door shut in his face and like not returned emails, phone calls, anything. Basically, this whole announcement was he, it completely blindsided him. And he's like one of the only people from the original who's still trying to get involved. And it was just kind of one of those things. It's like it, it it's a little scummy. It, it It is when you especially when you have somebody who's like, still that passionate about it and you've already had it fail so many times it's like why not bring why back not someone who would get it yeah like who's done who, it before try to get it. and i get it it's it's a business so i'm not gonna sit here and and people be like oh well yeah it's a, it's you know it is a business i get it but i i still think like if nothing has worked so far what what can it hurt you know what i mean so yeah. i just i just figured we'd mention that and kind of everybody's got a big a ego bit. though you know what i mean you can't Especially mm-hmm. when you get the money and you want to have an idea. And, and that's the thing. Everybody loves it. That's right? true. Yeah. Everybody loves it and they feel their own ownership over it because they experienced it too. Yeah. But it's so everybody wants their chance at it. And that's that's the thing about the Blair Witch, man. It's just one of those things. Everybody wants to have their shot at like making something cool like that. You know what I mean? So, Yeah. And the other thing thinking? that they, they mentioned in this too that I, I thought was really upsetting was just how... Um, you know, they had to go to court and basically prove uh, that they were who they were. Uh, so that way they could get at least their first initial payouts when they sold the property to the studio. That's and then we're talking about the filmmakers, the actors. Everybody had to go to court to prove they are who they are. And then it's the fact that, like, ever since then, they got a lump sum payment. Ever since, no matter what they've done with this property, talking books video games anything that the blair witch is attached to no royalties Nada. whatsoever they they don't get anything so they they're literally like they helped shepherd this ip they helped build it and they are completely cut out from it like without uh this guy we the blair witch wouldn't be what it was so it's one of those things where it's like it, it, it's upsetting it, it really is but i mean at the end of the day it is one of those things that goes to show you that no matter where you sit you, you should always have a lawyer or somebody there yeah. who will fight for your fucking uh who will make sure that your name is on the proper dotted line and uh, that you will get your rights uh in there because yeah there are some people who have their names connected to properties that they'll just sell 20 years after it was a failed film and then it'll blow up and then yeah. they'll just be living off those checks but it's unfortunate again like i said it's a business but i felt like we should acknowledge that a little bit because it's like yeah that's that's super shitty especially finding out about it at a fucking trades convention for mm. uh movie theaters it's like yeah oh yeah by the way we're uh rebooting this and making it bigger than it ever than it's ever yeah. been before and uh, we're gonna do it right but they won't but you know it is what it is okay evan you want to take us away here there isn't any real uh oh real we did miss one we missed one well i mean which one are you talking about the 28 days i thought yeah uh Let's let's get let's get Nosferatu. There's not much to say on Nosferatu, so okay. Let's let's get let's um, let's, do your 28 days. <laughs> you want to do that first? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll I, uh, keep this one. I do have to hop off. So okay, oh, okay buddy. All right, guys. 
All right. Alrighty. All right. Yeah. Love you, Luke. See, see you, dude. buddy. Well, it won't be long. We'll see you later. I'll miss you. <laughs> I'll talk to you, fellas. See you, man. Someday. Okay, buddy. Someday. Uh, see you, man. Eventually. Uh, yeah, we did have this in here as like a side story. There's not a, a lot to this one either. Um, but obviously we know that 28 Days is getting rebooted. It's uh, We're essentially getting the sequel that everybody's been joking about for years called 28 Years Later. Right. But what we found out is that it's going to be a trilogy. The first one, so far as it, it seems to be uh, written and directed by Danny Boyle, so the original creator coming back, which is always great. Very. And the sequel, this is what really caught my eye, is um, apparently going to be helmed by uh, Nia DaCosta, which if you're not familiar with, she was responsible for uh, the most recent remake, of, or I guess the only remake, of Candyman. Which yeah. um, I have yet to see. Me too. But I have heard nothing but good. Oh, things you didn't about. see the new one? Nope. I've I only seen, seen the it. first Candyman, and it's crazy because it's one of my favorite movies. The but first I've one just... is definitely the best, uh, but I think you'll like it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I I need to see. Uh, I watched the first Candyman um, a few years ago. We were going to do it as a podcast, but we never got around to it. And, uh, yeah, that was my first time watching it just a couple of years ago, and I never saw the remake. But I was very, very intrigued. I think every time that I went to go see it, something kept coming up. So, Thanks, dude. Happy That's very cool of you, man. Happy birthday. That's all you got. <laughs> we'll definitely keep you. You get the next one on the next stream. That's really cool, man. Thanks. Yeah, nobody has to sing me happy birthday, by the way. It's fine. Um, dastardly Canucks, I love it. Yeah, dastardly Canucks, I'll take that. Well, thank you. Oh, we'll keep this up for a little Don't bit. Get here. to plug the Discord. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> what a kind, what a kind. Yeah, he deal. is in the Discord. We we do hang out there. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, what I've got there. I'm pretty excited about that. I also like that uh, Cillian Murphy is supposedly coming back for this. Um, you know, I I'm really looking forward, honestly, to. A continuation of this series i actually don't think that the first film Thanks. is all that or i mean the second film is all that bad so i i'm of, uh, Candyman? no uh 20, oh the 28, 28 days weeks yeah. later yeah i actually think that the the opening <laughs> sequence of that is crazy intense wouldn't it the be 28 months okay. later like yeah i guess you'd have to do that right but uh no i think that uh this is super this is super exciting i'm i'm really really looking aging forward to and it. fermenting what I'm glad Danny thinking? Boyle is going to be doing it, and uh, I am curious to see what they're going to be doing with Nia DaCosta, because that makes me feel like there's like a completely different angle, because she has kind of a a vibe about her, and when you see Candyman, the new movie, and how it ties into the old one, it's kind mm -hmm. of genius, and she really hasn't done she all did that the, much. She went to Marvel. She did the Marvels, and then... That movie pretty much just got like uh, taken out of her hands. It pretty much is what we've yeah. understood. It's just like because Marvel's been in damage control mode for so long that like uh, a lot of people have been saying that it's like that it just didn't feel like it really had a voice, which is so different from everything I've heard about. Because like her Candyman movie is apparently like you just said, it has a really genius uh, twist to it. And I thought like the I, I that it just didn't seem like she really. That was the issue with that, I should say. Right, yeah. She's definitely more visionary than most people, I think. It's, like, visually, especially. Mm -hmm. So, But she's a director that I've been keeping my eye on, especially because, like, I do want to sit down. I have it on my voodoo. I have to just sit down and watch it. Uh, the new Candyman. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I am very eager to see what she's doing. And now that she's doing this, I'm more excited than ever to uh, go and check it out. Because, like, uh, I really am, like I said, excited to see what they might do with this franchise going forward, especially to hear back. your guys take on it, actually, because. Oh, the 28 uh, days and no. 28 weeks. No, no, no. I mean, the new oh, the candy man. Man? Oh, yeah, yeah no, I'll check yeah, it we'll out. definitely check it out. We'll do a partnered review for you. So that way that you would be great gonna shit on it. We're going to say it's terrible. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, Evan, what are you feeling about this? Uh, I, I've never seen 28 days later. What um, the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So, so 
Sorry, I don't have a. I don't have. Twenty Eight Days is one. great. It's it's a very good movie. It, they're very different ones, take so. to the zombie thing. Yeah, uh, sorry. It was also written by Alex Garland, so that's cool. Yeah. Oh, and actually, I think, did I did I say written by Danny Boyle? I might have. I was just skimming that. I think Alex Garland's coming back for this. I was like, yes, 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 yes. Alex Garland reteaming with Danny Boyle. My bad. Just directed. Makes sense. I'm so used to saying writer director. So sorry, never seen it. <laughs> See dastardly Canucks. <laughs> oh. uh, Got nothing. My for understanding: you. Dana Boyle's directing and written by X Girl. Yes, that is correct. Garrett. That's, that's, that's fucking you. wild, dude. You need to watch mm-hmm. these movies. There's a couple that I have to catch up on this year. <laughs> Seriously, we've been finding this this uh, this little live stream has been really bad for Evan. We've just been digging up all his little has, all yeah. his little blank all spots. my blind spots. Yeah, I do have but a then, lot of them. But then he'll have something like fucking Borderlands, which I've never seen, but I want to see. And then he'll talk about that forever. Isn't that what it is? Is it Borderlands or is Borderlands? it uh, the one? Well, the one you guys have been freaking out about? Second Sight just came out with one. Oh, the uh, I haven't seen it, but I just one. really liked the look of the release. Yeah, it's a no. pretty decent. It found is Borderlands though. though. Yeah, I thought it was the found footage movie. Oh, it's it's yeah, called I Final just Prayer seen in the United States. The Final Prayer. Uh, yeah, I think he doesn't like yeah, movies. Yeah, you're right. I know which, I know exactly what scene you're talking about. <laughs> Clearly Cynthia. right. <laughs> yeah he just uh he he feeds uh all his script ideas into an ai and chat gpt fucking true. spits it out real quick it's true <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah yeah he's just like makes sense makes sense yeah and then there you go i'll take that i'll run with that uh all right evan take it away <clears throat> all right so i'm talking about nosferatu um this is the reason that we're talking about it is because the first teaser of Nosferatu just premiered at CinemaCon, mm. uh, which is the first time any footage of this movie has been shared anywhere. Um, for some context, uh, Robert Eggers is my favorite director. Him and Mike Flanagan are my two favorite people working in the industry right now. Um, I just rewatched all of Eggers' movies this week um, because... I was trying to summon the Nosferatu trailer. I was hoping it would work. Uh, it didn't, unfortunately. So we we haven't seen it yet. We still It still hasn't been released to the public, but we do have some descriptions from people talking about the footage and what they saw and what they thought of it. And, I mean, across the board, everyone seems to be super hyped about it. Like, every single reaction is just like, this is, like, gothic horror at its finest. This is, like hallucinatory snowy weird like very classic horror but very eggers um which is i mean obviously right at my like there there are times when you ever like think about what your perfect horror movie would be (laughs) reading some of the descriptions of nosferatu has kind of been like this is like shit that i've like dreamt of existing Mm. um like i i haven't been this excited for a movie since halloween kills which i got unreasonably excited for (laughs) um that was the most excited i've ever been for a movie and nosferatu is is right there like i'm i'm just absolutely buzzing waiting to see anything from this if you know eggers has been wanting to do this for his entire career basically this is like a huge passion project for him he's been talking about it publicly for 10 years now um so to finally see this come to fruition is really exciting and especially because he is uh very very critical of his own work um like doesn't think the witch is a good movie so he actually agrees with you alex Um, (laughs) who said that robert eggers robert eggers (laughs) oh yeah Yeah, he's he's like because there was a lot that he wanted to do with it that he just couldn't do because they were restrained by budget see Um, eggers is on my side um so he he has he has a lot of issues with how the witch came out. Um, he he's very he's been very critical about all of his movies and posts. And hearing him say, while well, they were in post for Nosferatu, that this is the first time he's been happy with a movie in post in his whole career, is so crazy because clearly his standards for himself are so astronomically high. Because if he's not happy with something like the witch or the lighthouse or the Northman movies in post, if he's like, oh, that's a shame that we had to do that. 
the standard has to be ridiculously high because in my eyes these three movies are all fucking masterfully crafted films so seeing him say that he's happy with it now is like so exciting to me but we're hearing images of like the giant shadowy hand of count orlock like reaching over this entire like gothic snowy village and there's lots of blood everywhere and rats and willem dafoe is crazy and hilarious which is awesome because he was fucking so funny in the northman mm -hmm. um i don't know it like there's so much of this just just sounds like a movie that if it if it came out when i was a kid would be my favorite horror movie of all time <laughs> like um and rewatching his movies recently i only liked them more like right now if you ask me the witch would be my favorite from him uh, after rewatching them again recently mm. um the, uh, so much of that like he's such a painter with the camera like every frame seems so meticulously planned out uh, the way that the lighting and shadows are set up the naturalistic look of it all but then also hearing that nosferatu is going into this kind of like hallucinatory direction with some very impressionism yeah a lot of like weird experimental stuff which obviously he's been doing more and more of because like there was a bit of that in the witch then there was quite a bit of it in the lighthouse right. and then in northman he just went all out with this like surrealistic imagery uh which is I'm so fucking now. cool because like um well i mean obviously you get the original nosferatu yeah it's great german impressionism yeah um we got he's obviously a fan of shadow of the vampire uh, because he wouldn't have had Willem Dafoe in there. Yes. I think he, uh, uh, to be honest, I think Willem Dafoe is a prerequisite for right. I mean, he's uh, an Eggers now. They've worked, actor, they've worked yeah. together enough. <laughs> he's, he's and they work so everything. well together. Like, it just yeah. works. Did you notice that he likes actors with, like, the deep voice a lot? Oh, yeah. They no, I haven't style. noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and apparently, I didn't know this. This is totally off topic, but apparently Ralph Einzen is in uh, Frankenstein. Del Toro's Frankenstein. I yeah. didn't know that. Heard he has a that. very small role, but apparently it's really big or yeah. like really pivotal. pivotal. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm also very much looking forward to this uh, basically for all the same reasons. Evan is, I, I love Eggers, although he's not my favorite filmmaker working today. He's damn close. Probably top three. Exactly. Um, I love all of his flicks. Uh, I just I find his movies all... so enchanting. Like when I'm yep. watching an Eggers movie the whole time, I'm just like, they are his own brand, and that is something that like there's you no can't one making take away from like him. He is. Yeah, it's no. like when you watch an Eggers movie, you know you're watching one of his movies. It's kind of like uh, what Twi uh, Quentin Tarantino did for yeah. people. It's like you know you're watching one of his films when you sit down and watch it. Also, or David Lynch or David Cronenberg. I, yes, yeah. David Lynch, David Cronenberg, all these visionary auteurs, directors. He's one of them. Yeah. Uh, also, we got to kick Artie from here because he spoiled the movie. God damn it! Um, he said you can't there's a vampire. That, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought you were and, serious there for a second. I do want to point whoa. out that uh, Evan, you have been called out. You are working for yeah, a big fan. Yeah. Here's the thing, by the way. <laughs> um, to anyone who's listening to the words coming out of my mouth, do not listen to a word that I say about Nosferatu because I am so unbelievably biased. Mm. He is my favorite filmmaker. This is one of my favorite horror concepts. All I am getting hyped over descriptions of footage I haven't seen. Don't listen to what I'm saying about this. This is unreasonable fanboy hype. Have you listened? Okay? Have you watched any Tarkovsky films? Tarkovsky? Uh, yeah, a while. It's it's been a long time. Yeah. You really need to watch more. I know. Uh, I feel like that's your speed, dude. Like. Yeah. Um, it's I, I. Someone asked me recently. They were like, "Why is it that like Robert Eggers has three movies, and people are so like cultish? Like fans of his are like." <laughs> so crazy but it's like because there's no one making movies the way that he is even people that are doing that sort of brand of like very experimental filmmaking there's no one doing it like eggers with the amount of historical accuracy and every frame looking like a fucking painting like rewatching the northman which i think is the least eggers feeling robert eggers movie you can really feel focus features hands on that movie which he talked about a lot there was a lot of studio intervention with the northman well, I think um, it's kind of crappy how people get mad about like A24 and everything like that about him and stuff. Yeah. Because they think it's so pompous. It's like, dude, have, there's so many movies out there that you could say that about. You know yeah, what I mean? Honestly. They all yeah. exist. It's just the way it is. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's just so like meticulous with every element of the craft, which I think is like just why I get so excited about it. Like it feels like every single element 
is so thoroughly thought through and it's all building up to this like display of what just feels like a painting like it's beautiful it's artistic it's fascinating it's evocative it's so creative um it uh, his his filmmaking is so exciting to me and and this movie is is you know my most anticipated movie of the year easily it's my most anticipated movie so far of the 2020s um there there's just i yeah i'm unreasonably <laughs> excited for it so don't listen to me about it seriously <laughs> i'm just worried about what the the video is going to be like when it comes out you know buddy what I, mean? like, I don't i, I don't know how i'm going to tackle hard. it first yeah, of all when the trailer yeah. drops yeah, when the fucking trailer drops, That's I'm making gonna a video like about that. That's going to be like out of control too. I bet. Yeah, like this. This is the thing. Like this is unreasonable fanboy hype, and I am yeah. acknowledging that fully. But I'm also saying that like I don't think that there's any chance that I'm not going to like this movie because everything that Eggers has done in his entire career has fit right into this little pocket <laughs> that I love so much, and I have no reason to think that he's not going to do that again. So I'm going into this knowing that I'm probably going to lose my shit over it. And and, and I, no, we're talking about Andre Tarkovsky. That's what I was saying. He yeah. did this Stalker movie yeah. party. Um, also, it kind of sucks to hear already that some people have already seen the movie. So, uh, what what like did they have to say about it? Are they oh, yeah, they, they saw Nosferatu apparently years ago because uh, he... Uh, while attending high school, he directed and produced a nose for uh, he directed and produced Nosferatu for his uh, high school play. Uh, right. He also designed all the sets. No, but that's that's one of the the big points. The last point I wanted to touch on uh, with this was just that uh, <laughs> this has been something that since the witch, I remember watching an interview that he did. I forget with who exactly on YouTube, but he mentioned he did Nosferatu. A panel for it too, yeah, he wanted that to be his next project back then. And well, I've kind of been gunning for him to get it ever since. So the yeah. fact that it's finally uh, coming to fruition, I am always down to see a director, a creative of any yeah. kind, even whether I love him or not, uh, get to do a passion project. Like sure. I was excited to see Rob Zombie take on the Munsters because he was so passionate about it. Um, and this, I mean, I'm this one. I love the director. More, I yeah, I love the director. I, I think he's also I think he's a wonderful creative. I think yeah. that all his movies are great. And the fact that he's getting to do the one project that he has been pushing to do his entire career since he was in high school. Yeah. It's I wonder, I'm, I wonder I'm if he'll do like it. I love that. Uh Caligari or something. Yeah. <laughs> he would. Like, I mean I could see it. Yeah. The other thing too with with part of the reason that this is like such a big thing for his career is that like he has been talking about this since before the witch came out and like wanted it to be his next project. But do you know why he didn't do the Nosferatu right after? There were a couple of reasons. Um, casting was a big thing. They had a lot of casting issues with this movie. Uh, it wasn't just budget. That wasn't uh, the issue. He talked about this back then. The biggest thing that was keeping him from like really pushing on Nosferatu was that he didn't feel like he had earned the right yet to work on such an iconic property what a pretentious piece of shit <laughs> and he he wanted to make sure that he felt like he could do it the justice that he felt like it deserved before he tried tackling it so now hey. seeing him do this being confident enough to the point where he's like i'm ready to take on this property this passion project that has been what my career has been building up to is so fucking exciting to me nothing wrong with that honestly like if you if, if you think that now is the time you've got all your assets in place you know, if all your ducks are in a yeah. row per se, then you yeah. should. You know, that's that's great. <laughs> so, so you know, it's funny. I just watched an interview uh, of Kareem Hussein, who mm -hmm. is a he's a cinematographer. He's done DP. He worked on like a ton of fucking crazy movies. But he used to be one of those guys that did like those gore films, mm -hmm. which are very um, in their mind. A lot of those like dark, dark, dark fucking movies are kind of like their versions of what Eggers does. You know what I mean? I know that sounds kind of wild to think of that, but like mm. when the, some of these guys, I know it's because like you think of stuff like uh, August Underground, you don't think of Robert Eggers, but sure. they're going for that sort of thing, that specific thing in those kind of movies. Um, he did a movie called, hold on, Subconscious Cruelty, and uh, that is a fucked up movie. It's a it's an anthology like of it, yeah. stories, 
but he said that uh he doesn't want to be a director anymore because of exactly of that kind of attitude <laughs> it is because he he thought he was too pretentious himself right. even um but it's interesting to see like because his movies have done so well we're able to see stuff on a big screen with yeah. a lot of money that you would normally not be able to see and would only be kept to the to the, the that's what happened team. with like Bo is afraid right like yeah, that will saying, there, like, there's never going to be something like that in a theater again because they lost so much money that's why i'm happy i went and saw it me too like yeah it would have been one of those things i would have been beating myself up because it's every day whether happen. i liked it or not and i loved it uh it, it would be one of those things where i would have been like damn it why didn't i yeah, just that movie is it's hard to watch though a little it's bit it's fucking it, weird oh like, yeah oh you have yeah. to like have to be in like seven different moods to yeah. watch that movie <laughs> i have like, I've actually been wanting to watch like, it again i was recently. like right? we started watching it and i got my narcolepsy thing and i yeah. fell asleep about two hours in i yeah. can only imagine it's three Alex. and a half hours like dude fuck? like with that, I'm just I can only imagine shit. waking up and then being like <laughs> from the beginning portion of that movie and then being at the part where he's in the forest and they're you're doing lost. The you're lost. By the way, you're just like, what I can't the fuck is going on? That's a uh, that forest sequence, like the play sequence, is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, there is that some pretty cool stuff well in there. Um, I do want to touch on one thing with Eggers. I don't think, I don't think that he's coming at things from a pretentious angle. No, because, but I'm, just saying, I'm not saying that you guys think that he is or anything, but I, I think, think so. because I think he's a piece of shit, <laughs> because he's so crazily critical about himself and like, but that shits is on pretentious, his own work, though. That is pretentious in a way to shit on your own work. No, it's just so wholly, fully realized of yourself. That's why other people consider it pretentious. Okay, I'm not, so saying, saying, yeah, I'm yeah. not trying to say he's a piece of shit because he's pretentious or anything like that. He's it's not just, anymore. He's so in his own. You know, shit. he's a film and, nerd. Yeah, yeah, right, absolutely. Exactly. He's like, living in this world. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Who did Piranha and then grew up to be fucking enough Mr. blowing Big airs? Boy. No. Oh, are you no, talking about not. Joe Dante? No, not Joe Dante. I just can't think of his name. Is it Spielberg? I don't those of us who know. liked Bo is afraid to understand why other people didn't what? like it. Yep. <laughs> Spielberg didn't make Piranha. He made Jaws. I don't know. I'll have plenty of time to talk about Nosferatu. It's going to happen a shit ton this year. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what I you... I mean, like, yeah. once that trailer I'm, drops... I'm planning on doing a video on the uh, the original, and I was thinking about doing something with Shadow of the Vampire. I'm doing uh, a couple around that yeah, time. Yeah, because, like, I was thinking those would be nice to go along with it. Yep. Um, you know, it's just... It's one of those things, absolutely... Are you talking about Alexander Aja? No. I, oh, James Cameron is who I was talking about, by the way. Oh, and he did part two. two. Yeah, because he yeah, was well, being pretentious too with every Piranha shot of his. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. He's definitely one of those. But I would say uh, pretentious, it's like it's not always a bad thing, especially like I, th I feel like if you look at interviews and stuff and just like, uh, and I'm not super talking like nerdy Hollywood about interviews. Movies. Yeah, he's a big he's a big film nerd just like us, but he's also um, when you're spending that kind of money, that's what people get people upset. He's also mm. super. He, he also seems like a super humble humble guy, and that's one of the things that I like about him from his interviews he's done. And again, I'm not talking about like the big press junket interviews. I'm talking about when he gets on people like like what we're doing. Like if he just yeah. sat and talked to people, like he'll do that stuff. And uh, yeah, it's like that's that's one of those things that I really admire about him and appreciate is that he's willing to just sit down and geek out about some shit and just what, like, yeah, I like this stuff. I heard Eggers is actually a pretty cool guy. Um, yep. Uh, he was in the Yellow Brick Road as one of the costume designers. He he was a costume designer and a set designer for a long yeah. time before he actually so, got into directing himself. Like, And I watched video of him talking. He's just a regular guy. <laughs> you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, he, I mean, he's know, like, a, he's like art, a film school. You really dork. kind of yeah. focus on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I'm, it's his I'm world critical for sure. as fuck on myself. I mean, you guys have seen me. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, I, mean, I think like, we probably all are. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, we all beat, beat the shit out of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Bo is afraid. Looks like it'd be a painful watch in a cringe inducing way. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, if you're not in the right headspace for it, then like, yeah, it'll fuck you up. It, 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 that's a, that's a movie that'll fuck you up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really put. It makes you schizophrenic. It's like it's weird. I want to watch it again. I do too. I want to get the 4K, but I, I just every time I think about it, I don't have the money for it, and I'm just like, fuck it. Yeah. All righty, boys. Well, I was like, are you writing a book over there? What's going on? I'm looking uh, for wallpapers of the witch. 
Oh my god! All right, well, he's like getting his corn ready for after this. These guys are gonna, these guys are gonna <laughs> whip each other's heads off. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, okay. Before we do that, though, Alex, I know it's over a week late, but happy birthday, buddy! Happy Thanks, birthday, man. buddy! For, Seriously, thank you guys. On yeah. there. Thanks for for being understanding. That this uh, is all when, I wanted, you pieces of shit. I know when when a twenty four hang out calling, with my fucking friends. Um, um, please plug your discords. I don't have one, so. Oh yeah, hold on. I got asked to make one recently. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'd be a part of it. You can so come I'm, to mine. I'm thinking of ending things was kind of like that for me. That was a weird movie. I really liked. I'm thinking of ending things, and then the last like ten minutes kind of lost me. But maybe hmm. I'll need to watch it again. See you, Didi. See you, um, Didi. Thank you for tuning in. But yeah, that's uh, that's gonna do it for us. I I am tired. <laughs> Me too. I have to go back to work tomorrow, and I have to go read. Well, look at you. (laughs) No, actually, I think I'm gonna go watch like 20 minutes of The Strangers uh, because I gotta start getting those watched before. I'm trying uh, to get through the stand. The stand. Oh, look at that! (laughs) All right. Wait, hold on. I think I did the wrong thing. Sorry. Are you plugging the the Discord right now? Yeah, I'm trying to give because they asked. There you go. There you go. I don't know how to do it. I'm so stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. No, I I don't because they changed it. I don't know what the fuck anymore. You know, okay. I appreciate the live stream, guys. Of course, Garrett, thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Thanks, Vanessa. We appreciate you all for stopping in. Yeah. Next time. As always. And yeah, I think uh, I'm pretty sure we're doing one uh, next Monday, too, I think. I think so, yeah. That'll get us back on track, so... We have to do that. So you guys will see us sooner rather than later. And I promise we will have more Terrifier 3 news to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, here Alex. we go. I got it. I found it. Oh, man. But no, I... All right. I'm going to let Alex do this, and then and then I'll sign us off. Yeah. There you go. I'm gonna Boom. Have Sleep. fun. Boom. Join us. We have parties. We do things. I'm going to try to join it again. It didn't let me last time. There you go. It should be open. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming by and and, and Thanks, uh, guys. being a part of the stream. You guys rock. Thanks for you guys in. make sure. it. Thanks to oh, for, like, for, uh, okay. for donating all the birthday cash over there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Expender, as always, we appreciate yeah. you. Sir. I'm gonna go buy a computer with it. <laughs> so. There you go. No, that was seriously, seriously so kind. We appreciate yeah, you very so. much. Alrighty, and thank you all for showing up and chatting with us. We loved it, and. Uh, that's it. I'm, I'm ending it. Goodbye. Yeah. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>